Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not Islam is violent and we are starting right now with the skeptic side, in particular, Apostate Prophet opening. Thanks very much for being with us, Apostate Prophet. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, James, uh, and thanks everybody for joining. Thanks for all the debaters for agreeing to this. Now, the topic is whether um, Islam is violent or dangerous or not. Uh, when you read the Quran, you will very quickly find out that the Quran has a very, um, a very hostile language. For example, in Quran chapter um, two, verse one hundred seventy-one, and many other places, the Quran refers to the disbelievers as deaf, dumb, and blind. This is something that you can find uh, repeated in the Quran uh, many times. In Quran chapter 7 verse 179, for example, we find that uh, the Quran even says that the disbelievers are uh, worse, than, worse than cattle. It says, uh, to be specific, that Allah created many of the jinns and mankind for hell and that they have hearts with which they do not understand. Those are the disbelievers. And they are uh, like livestock, but rather they are even more astray. In chapter 8, verse 55 and 98, verse 6, we see twice that the Quran refers to uh, disbelievers, including Christians, Jews, and polytheists, and disbelievers altogether, those who do not believe in Islam, as opposed to those who believe in Islam, as the worst of creatures. And uh, in fact, in chapter 98, it is made, uh, the distinction is made very clear, where the disbelievers, so those who do not believe, are described as the worst of creatures, and those who do believe are then described as the best of creatures. This is just the beginning of uh, the very hostile language which we find in the Quran. What does the Quran exactly um, command Muslims to do on top of just, uh, you know, insulting and dehumanizing the disbelievers? We find in chapter 9, verse uh, 29, uh, one of my favorite verses of the very, uh, a very telling Quran verse of the, 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 the themes of the Quran. It says in chapter 9, verse 29, that the Muslims are supposed to fight those who do not believe in Allah and his messenger and who do not adopt the religion of truth, Islam, and to fight them until they are humiliated and they give the jizya, which is protection money. So Muslims have the mission, the command to go out into the world and to fight and forcibly subjugate those who do not believe in Islam and those who do not want to accept it. And Muhammad himself practiced this. Muhammad himself uh, went around declaring war, uh, finding reasons to fight his opponents and basically subjugating them. And he also clearly said, as we can see in a hadith, which is a report about the things that Muhammad did and said in Sahih Muslim, uh, book 32, hadith 75, um, he says that he wants to expel all Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and leave uh, nobody uh, but Muslims. And in Sahih Sahih Bukhari, uh, later on, he also says that he has been ordered to fight the people until they say that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. So if Muhammad himself, the prophet, the central figure, the authority in Islam, declares in, uh, you can find this in Sahih Bukhari, book 24, hadith 5, he says, I have been commanded to fight the people until they convert to Islam. Basically, this is what uh, Muhammad's mission is and what the Quran also uh, reflects. It says further in the Quran uh, that you should not befriend the Jews and Christians because they are friends of each other. It says in chapter 9, verse 28, that polytheists are unclean and so on. There is no end to how the Quran uh, not just otherizes, but also insults, humiliates and dehumanizes uh, the disbelievers or the so-called enemies of Islam. If we look at Muhammad's uh, life, we can also see that um, he did some very atrocious, atrocious things, such as um, for reference, in Sahih Bukhari, book uh, 63, verse uh, Hadith 48, we find an example uh, in which Muhammad sends his men to a polytheistic temple in Arabia, in uh, the southern part of Arabia, in Yemen, uh, called Dhul Khalasa. And according to different reports, we also understand that this temple is apparently quite similar to the Kaaba, which Muhammad adopted from the polytheists. He sends his armies and lets them destroy this temple. In the report, we see 
that Muhammad says, will you relieve me from Dhul Khalasa, this temple? So uh, his men leave with 150 cavalrymen and destroy the temple. And it says, I quote, and we killed whomever we found there. Then we came to the prophet and informed him about it. And he invoked good upon us and upon the tribe of Ahmas, who are the people who did this job for him, going and destroying a temple and killing whoever is there. This is uh, what Muhammad does. This is what Muhammad's army is, what Muhammad's people uh, did. Uh, we can also find another report, uh, Sahih Bukhari, book 24, Hadith 5, in which we see again repeated the idea that Muhammad said, I have been ordered to fight the people till they say none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. But in this report, we also find something else. Here we find that Muhammad's successors, the people after him, did not just go out and fight those who don't believe, they also fought all the Muslims within who separated themselves from the Islamic leadership and tried to practice Islam differently. So uh, the, the, cal the, the, the caliph, Abu Bakr, after Muhammad died, actually used this pretense and fought fellow Muslims because they weren't good enough, not traditionalist enough. This is what Islam is. There is more to it. Slavery, sex slavery, pillaging, robbery, uh, wife beating, and so on. But... I think I want to uh, kick it over to David here and uh, let him handle the rest and let him show how Islam uh, is played out in real life today. All right. You hear me, James? All right. So uh, um, uh, AP there at the end uh, was mentioning Abu Bakr and Muslims actually fighting Muslims. And notice it was that first generation of Muslims that almost annihilated itself with violence. I mean, Aisha, the mother of the faithful, marched an army against Ali, the commander of the faithful. And approximately 10,000 Muslims, if I recall correctly, died in battle. Um, these were Muslims who fought alongside of Muhammad um, at battles like Badr and Uhud and so on, and they're slaughtering each other over a disagreement. And what's what's sad about that is Muhammad said that the best generation of Muslims was that first generation. And the first generation was so overcome by violence that they almost annihilated themselves with violence. And Muhammad said, again, that's the best generation. And so we, we can see um, from the Muslim sources, I mean, in Islam, we're asking if it's violent. The solution for almost everything in Islam is violence. The solution for unbelief is violence. The solution for apostasy is violence. If your wife gets out of line, you can warn her first, but if that doesn't work, the solution is violence. Various kinds of crimes or sins, stealing, for instance, the solution is violence. It's violence, 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 violence. Um, if we ask whether Islam is violent, if you want to say no, you either have to change the meaning of the word violence or you have to change the meaning of, of Islam. Um, but the various polls uh, in recent years have shown just how um, prevalent some of these views are. So just, just to be clear in advance, there are plenty of Muslims in the world who sincerely believe that Islam is peaceful and who don't want to kill us and so on. Uh, nevertheless, some of these statistics are uh, fairly disturbing. Uh, in a 2004 poll, 65% of Muslims in Pakistan, 55% of Muslims in Jordan, and 45% of Muslims in Morocco said they had a favorable view of Osama bin Laden. 44% of Pakistani Muslims in 2011 said they viewed Osama bin Laden as a martyr. So you're talking almost half. 34% um, of Muslims in Jordan, 49% of Muslims in Nigeria, 23% of Muslims in Indonesia, and 20% of Muslims in Egypt said they have a favorable view of Al-Qaeda. 31% of Muslims in Turkey say that suicide attacks against Americans and other Westerners um, in Iraq are justifiable. One third of Palestinian Muslims said they support the massacre of the Fogel family, which included a three month old baby. 78% of Pakistani Muslims say they support the death penalty for leaving Islam. And so e even if you're dealing with low, lower percentages, like 21 or 25 or something like that, you're still talking about a lot of people. When you're talking about 1.6 billion 
uh, Muslims and you're looking at countries and you're seeing statistics like 65% favor this or 78% of that, you're talking about millions of people who want violence. And so if you're saying Islam isn't violent, then the only conclusion we could draw is that you're claiming that uh, this many people are misunderstanding Islam in exactly the same way. So that would be the question. Why are so many Muslims, if it's not violent, misunderstanding it in exactly the same way? And it's not just um, it's not just Muslim countries. It's not just Muslim majority countries. Uh, you can come to the West. Um, 2009, nearly one in four British Muslims said that the 7-7 bombings were justified. So you're talking about a quarter. 30 percent of Brit British Muslims said they would rather live under Sharia law than under British law. 68% of British Muslims said they support the arrest and prosecution of anyone who supports Islam. Notice that's me and AP. 68%, over half of British Muslims said they support our arrest and prosecution for insulting Islam. 18% um, of British Muslim students said they would not inform police if a fellow Muslim was planning a, a terrorist attack. So if one of their friends said, hey, I'm launching a terrorist attack and I'm going to go, uh, you know, blow up a train or something like that. Eighteen percent of British Muslim students said they're not going to they're not going to uh, uh, notify authorities about that. And so we see these kinds of statistics. And then we see very, very popular Muslims today, um, people like Ali Dawa, uh, warning that if he ever gets control of society, people like AP are going to be executed. He says that um, and his followers are very happy about that. We have Sheikh Asim al-Hakim, who laid out uh, the overall plan. He said Muslims are too weak right now to conquer the world. But he said uh, if Muslims keep preparing right now, then in a few decades, they may get to the stage where they're able to go door to door, knocking at the door, giving people three options. And the options are, not according to me, according to Sheikh Asim al-Hakim and the Muslim sources he's getting it from, um, you either convert to Islam or you pay the jizya, or, in his words, and he meant that you should be killed. And if, if that's your idea of a peaceful religion, uh, again, you're going to have to you're going to have to change the the meaning of the words violence or peace or Islam to uh, to get something peaceful out of this. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening. And I want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral channel hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from, whether you be Christian, atheist, Muslim, you name it. We're glad that you are here. And hey, big debate coming up. King Crocoduck, old school YouTube debater, coming out of retirement for this huge debate against david mcqueen it's going to be a big one you don't want to miss it it's on creation evolution so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it and with that we're going to kick it over to our muslim guests as well thanks so much for being with us perfect dawah and nadir the floor is all yours uh did you want to go first Mushi? yeah if it's okay sure uh, go ahead uh, sure. all right all right thank you um sorry i have been a little bit sick now <laughs> I'm, I'm better so uh, is Islam violent? There are many ways to answer it. It depends on uh, who you ask this question from. If you ask this question from those who have zero knowledge of Quran, then you believe that Islam is violent because for them, kafirs are disbelievers and killing them is allowed according to ISIS and Islamophobes who read Quran like ISIS. Despite kafirs are not disbelievers, but oppressors like ISIS, Ayatollah Fascist Khomeini, Hitler, Genghis Khan, and all other oppressors, no matter what they believe in, or be they believed in or believe in. Quran chapter 16, verse 83, they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it, and most of them are kafirs. In this verse, Allah Taala says most of disbelievers are kafir, not all. So if Kof is disbelieved, then all of them should be uh, kafir. Quran 2, chapter 2, verse 34. When we told the angels, bow down before Adam, they all bowed, but not Satan, who refused and was arrogant, and he became a kafir. In this verse, Satan did, didn't become disbeliever, but he rejected Allah's command. Rejecting any of his commands is a kufr, and I believe we all commit kufr, but in the day of judgment, Allah measures your scale of good and bad deeds. 
Quran chapter 23, verse 102. And those whose scales are heavy with good deeds, it is they who are successful entering heaven. Quran chapter 16, verse 90. Indeed, Allah orders justice and justice and doing goods, good deeds and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad deeds and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded. So rejecting these commands, which is doing good deeds and giving to relatives, needy and taking care of orphans is kufr, whether you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Quran chapter 107, verse 1 through, one, through verse 7. Have you seen the one who denies the religion? That is the one who repulses the orphan and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who pray, yet are not mindful of their prayers. Those who only show off and refuse to give even the simplest aid. So those who pray and repulse the orphans and don't feed the poor are the same as the disbelievers who do the same. They, their prayers are just showing up. So it doesn't matter what you believe in, but what you do matters in the day of judgment. Quran chapter 42, verse 43. And whoever is patient and forgives, indeed, that is of the matters requiring determination. Chapter 23, verse 96. O Muhammad, repel, repel evil in the best manner. We are well aware of all that they say about you. Allah SWT even encourages us to forgive those who do evil. Quran chapter 4, verse 135. O believers, stand firm for justice and witness, uh, as witness, uh, witness for Allah, even if it is against yourself, your parents, or close relatives, be they rich or poor. Allah is best to ensure their interest. Refrain from following your own desires. Uh, so that you do not act unjustly. If you conceal the truth, Allah is full, fully aware of what you do. Islam is not a passive religion and has a guidance for every situation. So when people are attacked by enemies, Islam gives them the right to fight back. But that permission is only in self-defense and uh, only as the last option. Quran chapter 8, verse 61. And if they incline to peace, then incline to it also and rely upon Allah. Indeed, it is he who is hearing the knowing. Quran chapter 2, verse 190. Fight in the cause of Allah only against those who wage war against you, but do not exceed the limits. Allah does not like transgressors. There are many more verses to read which teach us uh, the same meaning of being merciful and forgiving and peaceful. So a true Muslim is just the one who is merciful, forgiving, being peaceful, giving to relatives, needy, uh, being just and taking care of orphans and doing all good deeds. Uh, thank you, brother. Yes, brother okay. Nader. Wonderful. Can, can you guys hear me? Awesome. Okay. Thanks, uh, Muji. And uh, this is going to be very easy debate. Uh, let me first, but before I begin, I just want to first debunk some of these statistics David Wood <laughs> has presented trying to show Muslim uh, to be more violent than other people. And then he tried to say, well, this is just because of the Islamic teachings. Islam teaches them to be this way. Uh, well, you do know. Let me first start off by bringing some statistics of my own, showing you that the real problem in this world that we're having today is Christian jihad. I'm talking about what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, present to you the following article. Uh, from the Pope. The Pope of the Russian Orthodox Church basically just gave a religious edict telling us today that uh, to fight and die in Ukraine, this is a way that you're going to get your sins forgiven. Does that sound familiar? Well, that sounds like jihadism 101. That's the same stuff bin Laden and all the terrorists were teaching there, all right? And not only that, but we saw the Russian Orthodox Church sent missionaries, and oh, I'm sorry, uh, 
fighters, or what you call them, mercenaries to uh, to Syria, and they committed horrible acts of murder against the Syrian people. And this was all blessed by the Rock, the Russian Orthodox Church. And, but the but the murderous jihad of the Russian Orthodox Church. Actually, this is I would be here all day if, uh, long if I were to just tell you about all the murder scenes. But I want to talk about uh, a, a, another terrorist here, and that is uh, the terrorist known as uh, Billy Graham's son. Uh, what's his name? Franklin Graham. Now look at this. Bashar Assad, one of the worst mass murderers of our time. He gassed his own people, barrel bombs, murdering innocent civilians. Look at this statistic over here. Let's see what David Wood has to say about this here. He says, the reason, let me read this article, and I'm, and I'm getting it from DW, uh, or I'm sorry, the, con the conservative uh, conversation. Okay, the conversation. Here we go. The reason, this is one of the reasons I believe that Putin's war against the Chechen militia, militants in 1990s and, and more recent interview on behalf of Assad's government in Syria made him popular with Christian conservatives. Who? The mass murderer Assad. They believe Putin was protecting Christians while waging war against the Islamic terror. Now ask Osama bin Laden, ask ISIS, are you waging, are you massacring and supporting your terrorists to protect Muslims? Well, yes, I am. An identical reasoning of Osama bin Laden and all the terrorists. They walk and talk the same way. So there you go. I hope now let's get some stats in front of us to debunk some of the things uh, David Wood was saying. So Christians are the peaceful ones, right? Let us look over here. Pew, a uh, Pew research over here. Compared with the general public, Muslims are more likely to say targeting and killing uh, civilians is never justifiable. Now, be consistent now, David. When Muslims said something bad, you said Islam is a problem. That's because of Islam. Well, now you have to now uh, be consistent and say, okay, because of the religion of Islam, kill is, killing innocent civilians is wrong. Muslims lead uh, lead on that there. And again, please uh, hit pause on your YouTube video to get all my references. I, uh, I'm going to go through this very quickly here. But it's worse. Uh, this is, let, let me quote to you another statistic over here. Public, uh, pol uh, public policy polling. 49%. Of Republicans think the religion of Islam should uh, should be uh, should not be made legal in the United States. Let me open up this link over here. That's forty nine percent of these people. If given the opportunity, they would they would engage in the same religious persecution against Muslims that their forefathers did. The only thing which is protecting us is the United States Constitution, which which because there are many attempts to shut down our, our mosques and attacks against our mosques by these peaceful Christians. Okay, so I think I said enough on that. So here's how this debate's gonna go down. All of these arguments, you know, he threw a lot of stuff at us tonight, but all these arguments about this, uh, this, this, um, this idea that the Quran promotes violence and attacks against, uh, you know, against the non-believers, it can all be refuted by one simple argument, one simple argument which can destroy all of these arguments. And that is very simple. As Muji alluded to, the Quran, when it talks about in chapter 9, 929, fight the disbelievers, it excludes peaceful people. Not peaceful people. Not innocent people at all. So let us go and let us uh, uh, show you that one verse over here. I don't know how much time I have over here. This is Surah 9, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 9, uh, 91, I'm sorry. Let me go there real quick. If I go, oh, wrong, wrong document. So over here, it says fight the non-believers, but look at what it says over here. It says over here that, but when you find other people who want security from you and security from their own people, but whenever they are tempted into civil discord, they plunge into it. So if they withdraw not from you, now look at look at the criteria over here. If they withdraw not from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands, seize them and execute them wherever you find them. So what the so yeah, the Quran says, okay, go out and wage war against non-believers. But this is really a defensive verse. Why? 491 forces it to be a defensive verse. Because if you apply this and say, listen, not the peaceful people. So here's how this debate's going to go down. We're going to chase apostate prophet out of the Quran and David Wood. 
Then they're going to try to go to the hadith. But this hadith says this over here. And believe me, they're going to have no refuge. We're going to chase him out of the hadith as well. And then they're going to try to get some opinions, a scholar. And that's also not going to work for them. So why is Islam a religion of peace? Because, number one, because even though you find more verses, it's excluding peaceful people. So here is my challenge for apostate prophet and David. Prove me wrong. From all of the wars and battles that we find inside our texts, inside our, uh, you know, our scriptures, show me one group of people who were peaceful people and they were fought on the account of just because of their religion. Okay. And you will never find it. Uh, you, and in fact, we actually see from the Quran, it actually condemns this. So, so this is one argument that will destroy everything they produced. Uh, now, I do want to reference, he's, he, uh, I think Apostate Prophet brought about this hadith about uh, Dul Khalasa. So th- let me give you the, the hadith, what it actually says over here, okay? What, so he went out and asked people, okay, go, go in and, and tear down their temple. Why? Moses did the same thing, right? Muhammad is a prophet like Moses. Just as Moses smashed the golden calf, Muhammad did the same. But he said, okay, but everybody was killed. The text actually said, and then came the prophet, and they actually came to the prophet and said, and Allah's messenger, I have not come to you until I left it like a camel with skin disease. And the prophet simply invoked good upon uh, Ahmad and the Calvin. Now, here's my point here. We should not get into an interpretation. Well, look at Muhammad did said didn't say anything about it. Or we should find a clear, explicit teaching, just like I did when I quoted 491. That was a clear, explicit teaching from the Quran, rather than getting into some kind of interpretation game. So all throughout the Hadith, all throughout the Quran, you will find this recurring theme that if there are people who are peaceful, they're not. Uh, fighting anybody, there's no war to be waged against them. Now they raise a lot of in a lot of things, and one by one, uh, it it will be debunked. So why is Islam? So when we talk about okay, well, why is it violent? There is good violence, and then there is bad violence. Like for example, fighting to um, uh, protect uh, oppressed people. Well, that that's, that's considered to be a good a, a very good. Uh, type of violence. So I think we need to be clear here. We're talking about unjustifiable violence, violence like what, uh, what what's happening Both in Ukraine, seconds. which which is what um, uh, Putin is doing. So let me repeat my challenge. Let's start with the Quran. Don't run to the Hadiths. Don't run. Every, let's start with the Quran and show me anything in there which teaches to fight against peaceful people or to kill innocent people. And if you can't find it from the Quran, then say so. Just be yeah. honest. Thank you. And then we'll go to the Hadith. Time. With that, we're going to jump into open conversation, folks. And do want to say, as mentioned before, we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. This should be a juicy one. We're going to have Q&A afterwards. If you want to submit a question for the Q&A since we're live, you can do that by tagging me in the live chat with at Modern Day Debate. Otherwise, Super Chats work as well as we read those first, and then we try to work through the standard questions as well. With that, thank you very much to all of our guests for being with us. The floor is all yours. I want to quickly jump in and uh, say that it is very strange that this whole debate uh, on the Islamic side consists of uh, deflecting from the actual point. Uh, for example, Nader Ahmed, uh, when challenged about uh, all the violence and all the hate that Islam presents, jumps to, what about Ukraine? What about Russia? What about the Bible? What about this? What about that? Instead of focusing on the point, half of his speech was about that. We talked very clearly about uh, the Quran and about how the Quran it was practiced by Muhammad, how it is practiced mm-hmm today and we see in Quran chapter 9 verse 29 uh, that it clearly says and I want to read this in order to have some context here uh, let me let me do that Quran chapter 9 verse 29 it doesn't say fight only those who fight you it says very literally this fight those who do not believe in Allah look fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. Now does it say anywhere in here that you are supposed to only fight those who would declare war on you or who fight you. No, it says very clearly, explicitly, I'm reading it from here. It says fight those who don't believe and who don't adopt Islam. That's it. Well, can I answer you real quick? Uh, uh, Let me answer. (laughs) Okay, please. Uh, 
This is exactly what ISIS does. Okay, they take one verse of Quran and chapter three, verse seven. Uh, let me bring it for you. Uh, explain how to to read Quran. Okay, let me uh, three seven. I read for you that. Can we just stay uh, on the topic and uh, focus no, on the verse no, we're talking about? No, no, it is topic. Yeah, we are. You have you are reading Quranic verses, and you have to know how to read Quran. Okay, go Allah, ahead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explain how to read Quran. He says in chapter 3, verse 7, it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and others are unspecifics. As for those whose hearts is corrupted, like you, ISIS, Taliban, you know, they will follow that of it which is unspecific, desiring to create confusion and their own interpretation. And no one knows the true, its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. And they say, we believe in it, all of it is from our Lord. Thank, and thank no you. No one will remind. Okay. How thank, thank you. I, let me ask. Well, you the, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. Look, the, the, the verse. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about the verse. We we want to focus on that, right? So, what okay. does the a verse say in the verse? Uh, whom does it want the Muslims to fight? What exactly does it say? Who is the target? Can you tell me that? In okay. chapter nine, verse twenty nine. Okay. Uh, th that's that's what I was trying to tell you that. When you take one, how those firm in knowledge understand the true meaning of chapter... Can, can you answer my question? Yes, I'm, I'm in, in, in Quran chapter 9, verse 29, it tells the Muslims to fight certain people. Who does it tell Muslims to fight? Can, can I okay, uh, let, let me tell you. Let me, okay, let me tell you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, AP, I tell you that you, if you take just that one verse, you will not understand. Can you, can you, please, okay? can you please answer my question? Who does it tell Muslims to fight in Quran chapter 9, verse 29? If, if you take just that verse, I say chapter 60, verse 8 says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and uh, acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who are uh, acting yeah. justly. Does, does it say, wanna, does it in. say, uh, do not you, fight? On, I do, I do yeah. want to quick, why don't we jump to David for two minutes or one minute if you guys want to shorten it because I know, Nadir, that yeah. uh, you, you want to jump in a little bit early on the last one, which is okay, I understand, because two minutes is a long time. And then we'll go to you, Nadir, I promise, right after David. Okay, so... Oh, I mean, uh, I like, say, we're going to jump okay. to David now. I, okay. In, David. Instead of AP. David? Already for you, David. Oh, I'm sorry? Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, we, we have basically the same uh, strategy going on from uh, Muji and Nadir, which is to take a very clear verse and then say it's actually not clear because of this earlier verse or this other verse. And that other verse is where Allah says what he really means. And so if Allah in one place in the Quran earlier uh, in the revelations says, um, fight people who are attacking you, then later when he says, fight those who do not believe, he must mean those who do not believe and who are attacking you, even though that's not what he said. Now, what's the problem there? Well, for 14 centuries, Islam has had a very simple methodology for reading Quran verses when it looks like, hey, these two things are commanding us different things. And the message is from the Quran itself, Surah 2, the doctrine of abrogation. Allah abrogates earlier revelations and gives new things depending on the circumstances. And so we see this in the life of Muhammad, when Muhammad's a persecuted prophet, it's peace and tolerance, when he can only fight defensively, but isn't in a position to subjugate people, the revelations change to one of defensive jihad. Then when Muhammad has the most powerful force in Arabia, the message changes once again to fight those who do not believe. Now, if uh, when Allah says fight those who do not believe, he really means fight people who are attacking you. He had already said fight people who are attacking you. Why did he need to say this new thing 
that sounds like he's commanding you to fight someone completely different, especially when you read 929 in context, because the, the, the verses that come immediately after explain why you're fighting Jews and Christians. And it's, well, the, the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, and the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. There's not one word there about, oh, and they're attacking you as well. Yeah, and so, um, oh, okay, okay go ahead. Uh, how, how long do okay. I have? Uh, Two uh, minutes as well. Okay, let me, yeah, let's, so, you know, I asked a very simple question. Now, let me first, you know, there's a lot of information being uh, <laughs> being given. I'm going to address one by one now. You see, apostate, the reason why I brought up those statistics was to show that if you look at Muslims in comparison with other people, there's really not a whole lot of difference. We are fighting Christian jihad right now in Ukraine, okay? So I'm showing you that those statistics really don't mean anything, and actually, they, Muslims fare very well. Now, let's get back to 929. You see, now, look, what you are doing, you're taking the verse, you're cutting it out and say, OK, let's just look at 929. Says, fight the disbelievers. Fight the disbelievers. OK, AP, that's what it says. OK, but I'm asking you, let's perform proper exegesis and let's look at other verses which are also related to fighting non-believers. Let's go to 4491. And you're saying, no, I don't want to go there. No, let's go there. Because when you read it in light of 491, the four, um, 491 spot check, it says that if they do not restrain their hands from you, nor offer you peace, then you can take a hold of them and, and slay them. For them, you have a clear warrant. So 491 tells us you got to get a warrant first to fight. Okay, so that's all I was asking you to do is read it in light of other passages. This is just basic uh, exegesis. Now, re responding to David Wood with this canard that you see when Islam is uh, on the when Islam is weak, then they're defensive. This is his malicious, nefarious spin interpretation he's placing upon the text. There's no evidence for any of that. OK, so and, and of course, he should really show no evidence for that anyway. So the issue now and then and then, uh, you know, David tried to say, OK, well, you see, the reason why you're supposed to fight the non-believers is because they were something about was there or something like that. Read the text carefully. Once again, another spin upon and the text. Time. It doesn't say because. And I ask minutes. you, what? show me where it says it. this is the reason you fight them. Where Just is so that? You can hear me. <laughs> We'll kick it over okay. to Apostate Prophet or David. Um, so uh, I want to be very, um, very good here and go to Quran chapter 4, verse 91, which Nader Ahmed frequently cites in order to explain that uh, the Quran is actually a very peaceful book. It says here only that uh, those who ask for security from you, from you for their people, uh, you should return uh, that favor to them. Uh, and every time they they return to disbelief, they will back, they will back into it and so on. It, 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 it of course, doubts them again. If they uh, ask for peace, give it to them but then they will turn away and then seize them and kill them and so on it goes uh, to that place again now here is an issue imagine that i am a commander or i am a warlord like muhammad and i am in charge of a, a bunch of people i tell them go and fight whoever does not believe in what we are preaching but then i also tell them hey if somebody asks for peace for security grant it to them okay make peace with them but you know they will turn away, and then you will seize them and kill them again. This is what they, what I what I tell people. Do I hereby tell uh, my followers that they should only fight those who are aggressive? No, not at all. I am clearly telling people that they should fight all those who don't accept what I preach. And I also add that if they come and want to make peace, you can make peace. Why in the, why in the world does the Quran, to begin with, in uh, chapter 9, which is a, a, a chapter revealed toward the end of Muhammad's life, at the very end of the Quran's life, why does it con uh, command Muslims to fight those who do not believe? I simply have a very simple question. Quran chapter 9, verse 29, 29 is only one verse. In this verse, we can analyze this whole sentence. It's usually written, on as, written out as a whole sentence. In that sentence, please show me the object. It says, fight those who do not believe, yada, yada, yada. What exactly is the object 
in this verse. Who does Allah tell you to fight in this verse? How does Allah describe those whom you should fight? Can you please answer this question? Well, absolutely. Muslims. I'd love to do that. If if, uh, if I can go, James. Uh, so the so the Quran. First of all, let me first back up and uh, you know go back to nine twenty nine. You know, it's I'm sorry, a four ninety one. The text specifically excludes people who are peaceful. It seems like you have glossed over that apostate prophet. So because and because and you put some bizarre uh, interpretation spin on the verse so that you can get out of that. Not people who are peaceful, but there's no way out for you. Remember, I told you, because not only are we going to chase you out of the Quran, but we're also going to chase you out of that hadith. So let's go there because Muhammad actually explains how this verse is to be interpreted. This is from Sirah Ibn Ishaq. And there's so many references like what I'm going to show you. Muhammad said, <clears throat> I will war against them who that war against you and be at peace with those who are at peace with you. Here we see a clear statement that we are at peace with people who are peaceful. Okay, so now here's what I love. Here, here's the battle. This is called the caravan raids, okay? And because these Muslim, I mean, the polytheists were attacking the Muslims, and um, so the Muslims responded back. And so what's interesting here, the the and this is this is again, please look at my references on the screen. You just got to hit pause to get them. So what's interesting over here is Muhammad set siege to them, but one of the pagans said, "Hey, go send somebody out to Muhammad and let's just talk peace on this thing." As soon as they as soon as they offered it, they said, "Let's just send this person to Muhammad and now read the text which I have underlined over here." Then Muhammad returned back to Medina without meeting war. Why? Because the Quran said. 491, that if the disbelievers, if they're peaceful, you there uh, you have no warrant against them. Now, I've just shown you guys, two Guys, excuse me. I asked a very simple question. Muhammad. I'm still not getting an answer. I, I asked a very another, simple question. Another 10 seconds. I'm so showing you, right back you how the Quran is to be interpreted. Uh, I'm showing you from the life of Muhammad. Now, now there's many. Now, in this book, Sirah Ibn Ishaq, there's many battles taking place. Can you show me anybody in that book who was fought, who are peaceful people, who are fought just on account of their religion? And time. Uh, AP, before you before you uh, before you Go respond, let, let me just uh, point out what's on the screen right there. The raid on Wadan, which was his first raid. <laughs> so this is right after Muhammad and his followers leave Mecca. They flee Mecca. Um, and they go to Medina and then they start uh, they start raiding. And Notice that's in the that's in the phase where defensive jihad starts, and Nadir is taking this a passage that says in his passage he put on the screen. This is his first raid, and pretending that nothing ever changed. And notice all it says: he returned to Medina without meeting war. What happened? Nothing happened. He tried to go out and fight. It didn't work. That's what happened for several of his early raids. It was a it was a total bust. And Nadir is taking a quote from there. And you see, this is Islam. <laughs> this is well, interesting. In, in, so, in fact, in fact the Sirah itself, itself clearly explains to us that Muhammad, upon establishing uh, a little group in, in Medina of Muslims, repeatedly uh, tried to you know, raid the disbelievers. And it clearly explains to us, you should notice if you read the Sirah, that the disbelievers... Uh, finally sent their army and the first battle took place because the Meccan polytheists responded to Muhammad's provocations and raids and decided to attack the Muslims in order to put an end to this threat. So it's very funny. You, you, you tell us about how we would escape to the Hadith and the Sirah. Apparently, you have not read the Sirah ever because, I mean, that's how the history in there goes. Yeah, yeah and, and just, just, just I, no, no, one second. I, 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 just wanted to give, I just wanted to give a quick note for everyone who's watching because some people have no clue what, what, we're, what we're talking about. Um, so I'm not, I'm not responding to anything right now. Just um, uh, when Muhammad and his followers left uh, Mecca for Medina, Muhammad started uh, launching... Um, launching raids against them. And he launched a raid and it didn't work out, launched a raid, launched a raid. I think he launched seven raids before one of them actually worked out. Yeah. And then, as AP pointed out, then they respond by sending out an army just to protect their supply. So notice exactly. who, who yeah. was fighting defensively here. The Muslims kept attacking, the polytheists kept defending. That's all I, that's all I wanted to point okay. out. Well, let me, let, me, let me respond to all that. Okay, so pretty much you could ignore 
everything apostate prophet and David Wood are saying, because these are nothing more than nefarious, malicious interpretations that they're spinning upon the text. Okay, there's many passages here, you know, which clearly Muhammad is saying, okay, in, in, like I quoted over here, I will be at war against those that war against you, and I will be at peace. Now, if you would please end the screen against. sharing, you shouldn't dominate the screen with that, please. Okay, okay, okay well, I'm, I actually have another, I actually have another reference. Okay, okay but you should, you, should, you should keep that for your opening statements, you shouldn't dominate the dis okay, discussion well, with uh, let me, screen let sharing. Let me give you another one, since it's still not clear to these guys, okay? <laughs> now, let us look, I will just quote this, this last, like, like I said, there's so many passages about being at peace with non-believers who are not fighting you. I mean, these are just some of the many. But the issue which about the caravan raids, which I just want to correct you, Sira Ibn Ishaq made it very clear that the caravan raids was only a response to the persecution and the threats made and the attacks made by the Meccans. So that was, and, and what was the purpose of the caravan raids? It was to put a, a embargo against the city of Mecca, complete lockdown. The purpose of the caravan raid was to send a message to them, hey, listen, back off, we don't want war. That was the message of the caravan raid. Then we can go through Syria ibn Attaq. I got the references, we can look at all of that. Now I wanna quote one more hadith just to light these guys up here, okay? Okay, so it says, it says over here, the pagans were of two kinds, the, and their relationship to the prophet and the disbelievers. Some of them were those with whom the prophet was at war with, and the prophet used to fight against them. And then they used to fight against him. And the others were those with whom the prophet made treaties with. Neither did the prophet fight them, nor did he fight them. So chapter 9, verse 29, fight against the disbelievers. That's clearly not all disbelievers. Okay, let's end the screen sharing, please. Come on. That. Okay, so go ahead, please. So uh, I, I just want to cl uh, clarify what's happening here. Nader Ahmed is uh, saying, ignore everything that David Wood and Ap Apostle Prophet are saying. Listen to us. The Muslims were just making uh, sure that, uh, you know, to, to put an embargo on the disbelievers. They were just trying to protect themselves. So what is happening here exactly uh, in that time that we are describing is that Muhammad and his people are supposedly uh, persecuted in Mecca, where their home is. They uh, go to Medina, settle there as Muslims. And uh, after settling there and being far away from Mecca, where they were not wanted because they were very offensive toward the local polytheistic religion, uh, there, the first thing that they do is to establish a force and then to immediately send out raiders in order to raid caravans, which the Meccan polytheists uh, have riding from Mecca throughout uh, the Middle East. Muhammad is here not uh, sending a warning out, not defending himself from a threat. No, he's sending people out in order to harass caravans that belong to the Meccan polytheists. This is not self-defense. This is Muhammad choosing to continue a, uh, a conflict in a hostile way, which eventually, because of his own provocations, turns into a war and is nowadays by Muslims called a defensive war. It was not called so by the Muslims themselves in the very beginning. Now, I want to go back and Repeat my question, which is apparently extremely hard. Quran chapter 9 verse 29 tells Muslims to fight certain people. Whom does it tell Muslims to fight? Can you please answer the question without deciding? Um, yes, oh. I, uh, maybe I also can uh, talk, please. Uh, I have said, uh, AP, you are exactly like ISIS. You take one verse of Quran, okay? One verse of Quran, and you say all these verses are trash. That verse you say is the entire Quran. Quran says, I'll, in chapter 60, verse 9, Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of your religion and expel you from your home, uh, homes. And aid you in your expulsion. Quran chapter 29 verse 46 says, and do not argue with the people of the uh, scripture except in the way that is the best, is best, except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in, okay, I don't uh, read the rest, chapter two verse 62, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians and Sabians 
whoever believes in Allah and the last day and do righteous and good deeds shall have their rewards with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they, they grieve. Quran chapter 3 verse 113. Not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a person that stand for the right. They uh, rehearse the verses of God all night long and they prostrate themselves in abortion uh, adoration so you just take one there are many many verses of quran but you just take one verse of quran and you say this is the whole picture okay and the whole picture says this but there are so many verses of quran that says uh, fight against those who fight Uji, you have given me fight many as many verses Yes. None, of, none of these verses contradict uh, chapter 9, verse 29. In fact, I can add a second question to my actual question, which is, can you give me one single Quran verse in which it says that Muslims are not allowed to okay. fight those who do not attack them first? Can you find me one Quran verse which yes. says Muslims are forbidden from fighting, yes. uh, from, from fighting uh, people who are you know, peaceful or who are... You know, yeah, I gave you chapter one. There's so many verses. Can you give me one? Yeah, chapter 60, verse 8. Okay, Allah well, let's, let's look at it. For, Allah uh, does not forbid yeah. you from let's look those at it. who do not fight you. Because well, one second. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, let's, one, let's one, second, one second along these lines because I just, wanted, I just wanted to add um, uh, on, on the issue of, of methodology because when we quote a Quran verse that says something very clearly uh, in a verse that Allah says is, is perfectly clear, um, we're, we're saying uh, we're hearing ah you're you're ignoring the rest of what what the Quran says but notice so uh, Muji brings up um, Surah 60 verse eight and he thinks that this is saying some you know be peaceful if you look, if you just go a few verses earlier to Surah 60 verse four so same passage and this is why under there needs to be some methodology to conclude what Allah is actually saying because Muji's right about this you can take one verse and rip it out of context and completely distort the meaning but you could do that with a peaceful verse uh, as well so just go four four verses earlier uh, Surah 60 verse four indeed there has been an excellent example for you in Abraham and those with him when they said to their people Verily, we are free from you, and whatever you worship besides Allah, we have rejected you, and there has started between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. So this is the Quran. This is Allah in the Quran saying, here is Abraham, an example to you in this passage. Here's Abraham. He's an example. And Abraham, it's made up, but Abraham is saying to the unbelievers, there is hatred between us and you forever until you all only believe in Allah. And so we, we have to take these kinds of things into account when, when we're reading the same passage. But then we have to look at the Quran as a whole and say, why is it that the final marching orders are commit, are called sound like they're calling for violence against people just for being unbelievers? And then when you say, ah, but you can't read it that way because of these earlier verses, but according to the Quran itself, when these verses contradict, abrogation occurred. And so the okay. question is, which one came later? That's the one that applies. Yeah, okay. So so let me let me just answer some of that. First of all, you guys, I think apostate prophet and David would they, they have a misunderstanding uh that okay, well, why did the Quran even say fight against the non-believers? It should never say that. That's wrong. Fighting against the non-believers during the life of Muhammad was a right thing to do. And I'm going to prove it to you and I'm going to show you why it is a still a peaceful thing. Think about the the historical context of 929. You've got the Roman Empire on the left You've got the Persian Empire on the right. They have been locked in war for now 600 years. History tells us there's the longest war in history. Okay, so and this was a never ending war. All kinds of horrible persecutions were taking place, uh, you know, in both these lands. And so w when you see this type of, you know, never ending war, Allah says this. He says, go and fight against the non-believers and subdue them. And that's exactly what 929 did. It conquered the Roman Empire. It conquered the Persian Empire. And it ended a 600-year war. I will also show you a historical reference where historians point to this verse, 929, and say, hey, listen, 
It is because of 929, this same verse, David Wood and apostate prophet are complaining about, is what saved the Jews from the genocide of the Christians. And I will and, and I will show you that. But having said that, I want to just go back to 491. Because 491, you know, what the verse basically states over there is that, <clears throat> you know, if people are not peaceful, then for them, you can slay them. And what the text says, for them, you have a clear warrant. You have a clear authorization against those people. So me as a sincere Muslim believer, not someone spinning nefarious, malicious interpretations, we got to pause and we got to think, hey, you got these peaceful tribe of people over here. Allah said, if they're peaceful, if they're not peaceful, okay, then you've got a clear warrant against them. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to stop. I'm like, wait a second. The 491 spot check or, uh, is making me think twice before I attack a peaceful people who are restraining their hands, they're peaceful. How can I attack these people in light of the 491 spot check? So this is why we say that Islam is a religion of peace because of 491 and also offensive wars, the misunderstanding David has and prostate having. I do want to kick it over. It's by, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I talked a lot. Uh, address, listen to uh, much. the warrant argument. Go ahead. Listen to what listen to what Nader is saying. He's saying um, it was completely justified for the Muslims to have the command to fight the disbelievers. But hey, also uh, Muslims are not allowed or not supposed to fight those who do not fight. How exactly does that work? How exactly does that work? I, I will tell you how it works. The Quran commands Muslims uh, to fight those who don't accept Islam and who do not adopt Islam from the Muslims. Muhammad lay, further explains this in the Hadith. We have many of those Hadith. Muhammad explains in the Hadith that he has come to fight the disbelievers until they testify that Allah is the only God and that Muhammad is his messenger. He further instructs his followers to go and to make, uh, to, to give certain options to the, dis to, to, to the disbelievers, to say to them, uh, you have several options. You can accept Islam, number one, and we will leave you in peace and move on. Uh, we will, you will become our subjects and you will pay protection money, jizya, and you will be completely in our control and do whatever we say, but we will let you live. Or we can fight, and when we fight you, we will uh, kill you, take everything that you have, take your take your women as captives, as slaves, don't shake your head, you will, you, you know that this is in your sources, take your women as, as, as slaves, including, including having sex with those uh, captives, by the way, uh, enslaving your children, and so on. Muhammad himself explains this. This has been practiced throughout Islamic history. If you want to appeal to history, I can give you uh, a wonderful source. Robert Hoyland wrote a book called In God's Path, the Arab Conquest and the Creation of an Islamic Empire. It, this is a book without agenda, and it puts down very clearly the, the early history of the Islamic expansion. It explains how the Muslims relentlessly, violently went out and fought and conquered and slaughtered whatever they could. They didn't even bother about spreading Islam at first. They just wanted to conquer as much as possible, and then in whatever they conquered, they spread Islam. This is how Islam established itself. The sources are given right here, and I'm asking you one very simple question. Without deflecting from the point without going to things that in no way contradict this command tell me in quran chapter 9 verse 29 it says fight those who do not believe in allah and his messenger right what exactly is the subject since i know you will not answer the question and you have taken a great liberty at sharing your screen and putting it in our faces here i would like to do that uh, as well here on my part let's go ahead and do that i would like to share my screen here and see exactly what it says here and we can together analyze the structure of the sentences. Let's see. Do you see my... Yep. Green? Okay, wonderful. So here is Quran chapter 9, verse 29. Apparently, this is an extremely difficult Quran verse, which nobody seems to understand because I have been asking about it forever now. Uh, before this Quran verse, we find that uh, the, it instructs uh, Muslims to keep polytheists who are unclean out of the sacred area, which belongs to Muslims. Then in chapter 9, verse 29, it says the following. Let's take this translation, Sahih International. Fight those who do not believe in Allah 
or in the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth from among those who were given the scripture, fight until they give the jizya, protection money, willingly while they are humbled. Since the Muslims refuse to answer this question, let's do this very, uh, very simply here. It says, fight. It commands Muslims to fight. And whom does it command them to fight? Here, here is the object. Those who do not believe in Allah, one. Those who don't believe in the last day, two. Those who don't consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, three. Those who do not adopt the religion of, of truth from those who were given the scripture, Christians and Jews. So those Christians and Jews who don't adopt Islam. So it clearly tells people to attack and fight the disbelievers who reject Islam and to humiliate them. And if you want the reason for that, in the next verse, it says that the Jews and Christians are disbelievers who are corrupt and so on, which is why you are supposed to fight them. You well, are welcome. That? This was okay. really very hard. So, so the issue, I think, which you guys ran away from, both David and apostate prophet, is 929 did end 600 years of never-ending war. 929 ended, and I, and I did promise you a historical reference about how 920, not only did it end the 600 years war, but I want to quote to you the Jewish virtual library. What I'm, the point here is fighting the non-believers at the time of Muhammad was the right thing to do. That's what the historians say. Here it talks about that the Christians declared that all the Jews must be killed in Jerusalem, yada, yada, yada. But look what the text over here says and what the historian says from the Jewish virtual library. It looked like the end of Judaism in Judea. However, things were going on in the Arabian desert, which within seven years would change the picture of the Near East and of the whole world. And what is that? Surah 9, verse 29, the very same verse that a prophet, prophet is complaining about and David what is complaining about. Why? So the point here is, at the time of Muhammad's life, that was a right Thing to do. Non-believers had a lot of problems. And that's why Allah actually said in that verse, subdue them for God's sake. They've been fighting for something. There was so much evil. And what 929 did, it made the Romans, it made the Persians and the Jews who they were trying to massacre here. They made them all citizens under one nation. That's, yep. a, that's the beauty of the Quran. That's why there, it, we, there, even if we were to interpret 929 in an offensive way, what we must understand is offensive war doesn't make the Quran not peaceful. And I will give, I will quote for you one more reference from a Roman, a fourth century Roman uh, writer. And I'll give that to you in a second. He said, Sivis Pacum Parabellum. Let me translate that for you. If you want peace, prepare for war. Sitting in a defensive posture, uh-uh, you will get conquered. You want peace, prepare for war. This is the way the world is. But like I said, the 491 spot check, which you ran away from, clearly states you need a warrant. Allah said, for those people who are not peaceful, you got a clear warrant to, to fight against them. So me as a Muslim, when I read that, I'm like, whoa, you really got to think, hey, are these people, should I fight and wage war against them in light of the 491 spot check? Okay, so... Uh, I will answer your point about where Muhammad said, uh, I have been ordered to fight until time. there's none, but Allah, I'll answer that in my next time. Go ahead. Yeah, can we get this off the screen here? Sure. All right. So, so a uh, couple things here. Uh, one, notice everyone, Nadir's uh, claim is that Allah ordered, Surah 9, verse 29, fight those who do not believe in Allah, to protect the Jews from the Christians and to end war. And of course, this led to 14 centuries of war. Islam spread west, Islam spread east, Islam fought its way across northern Africa up into Europe, Islam fought east uh, out towards India and China. And so if Allah's plan was to end war by sending 929, my goodness, most epic fail ever. But notice what Nadir is saying. Uh, Allah sends Muhammad with this revelation to protect the Jews. So he's the same guy he sent who said, the end will not come until you fight the Jews, until the to the point where even if the Jews are hiding behind a tree or a rock, the tree or the rock will scream, there's a Jew hiding behind it. Come kill him. That's the guy Allah sent to protect the Jews. And you can see how well that uh, relationship is turning out um, to this day. Um, as for 491, my goodness, um, let, let's just let's just read that. Um, no, notice how the verse starts. Others you will find that they wish to gain your confidence as well as that of their people. 
as well as that of their people. Read the historical background. This is talking about people who come to Muhammad and say, ah, there's no God but Allah, 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 Allah. And then they go back to their own people and then they turn, they immediately turn back to unbelief. They're, they're playing both sides of the field here. And so is this, is this sort of some command that puts a check on all future revelations? No, read Tafsir Jalalain, read uh, Ibn Abbas. It tells you the groups that these were talking about. This is not, here's the command for all future commands. So that when Muhammad says, I've been, com I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah. And when uh, Allah says, 929, uh, fight those who do not believe in Allah. He's really saying, oh, but make sure you go back to Surah 4, uh, verse 91, where there were those people who were trying to claim that they're they're part of both groups. And then you, you know, if 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 they didn't guarantee you peace or just stay with you and not go back, then you had to slaughter them. You, you can't make up your religion as you go along, Nadir. Uh, I mean, who who says this? You guys keep saying we're making this up. Uh, the greatest Islamic scholar and many, many uh, Islamic scholars today, they agree with us. They're not saying, ah, oh, you have to go to Surah yeah. 4, verse 91. Okay. No one says that. It's too much. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. But does yeah, Muji uh, want to does Muji yes. want to say anything That's before right, we move? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I would like to say first of all, uh, not uh, all Muslims uh, believe in um, the same, you know, uh, things. Um, like especially, uh, you know, for example, I have some disagreement with uh, Nadir here, of course, and uh, there are many Muslims who disagree with uh, each other. So uh, when uh, you AP and, um, you know, especially you AP, when you go around and demonize entire Muslim world and all Muslims, uh, you know, it is uh, really terrible uh, of you because uh, for example, when you had this, um, you know, discussion with uh, Young Dom, you managed to make him an Islamophobe, a Muslim hater within just uh, one hour or something. I have, I have clipped. I'm going to uh, share for for everybody to see. But how you change? If I'm allowed, how you change him? Uh, you know, uh, let me see if I can uh, find it. Anyway, I will uh, try to share it uh, my next time because I have to see how do I. Uh, share that clip anyway so you manage because i don't believe in anything of what you say and isis and taliban okay because you both have the same beliefs all right you just reject those beliefs and they follow it okay both of you believe in a terrible you know uh, a barbaric uh, islam and there are hundreds of millions of muslims who do not agree with you and do not believe in uh, what you believe and you just follow one verse of quran and say this is the entire picture okay and i have so many beautiful verses of quran that says fight only those who fight you okay and be uh, righteous towards those who do not fight you those who you know who do not expel you from your home and so so on. So I will uh, on my next uh, speech. I want to uh, share that uh, clip that how you manage, you know, to demonize uh, entire Muslim. And if unfortunately, if my neighbor, my uh, non-Muslim neighbors see you, and they know that I'm a Muslim, what they think about me, it is. I hope that they don't see what you preach, okay? Because you really spread hate against Muji, entire I, Muslims. I really, I really do not care about uh, right. of yes. what kind of a Muslim you are and what you believe in. And mm -hmm. are you playing the victim? Yes. I understand yes. that you might be peaceful, yes. but yes. what you have to understand is that I am an ex-Muslim. There are yes. your fellow Muslim YouTubers out there who make YouTube videos in which they clearly say that people like me are little weaklings and we should be executed, killed, and because you. Well, well, because we because yeah, we yeah, Islam see. and let spread see. corruption. Yes. There are okay. there are a dozen there are a dozen Muslim countries in which leaving Islam is forbidden yes. in and some of them it is, them it is punishable by okay. death yes. and, and you, you want to guys. and you want to come you here and play them. the victim let, 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 let let see. See. wait wait wait, wait not I actually okay. like but, but hey but hey, but hey. Not let, let's, 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 let's not too much speaking over each other otherwise we can't hear either side let me come to let me come to my part and let me share my screen here to talk about Jews since I think Ahmed Ahmed made a huge blunder here. I gotta yeah. just to, I, I give you about uh, just a bit yeah. over uh, two minutes. Yeah, so I'm just gotta, going to say, well, I, uh, I was talking uh, you, I, perfect hour. I, so I gotta give yeah. a. I, I promise we can come back to you, but I want to give a possible yes. prophet a chance to to make his two yeah. minutes. I think, yeah, and and and, 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 Jay, and, and James, uh, ne next time Muji speaks, you give you can probably I think give him a little longer because we you know the rest of us spoke much. more earlier. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I just. 
Yeah, okay. And, and, and he's the victim. You need to give him more time. So, yeah. uh, uh, Nader Ahmed here talked about how peaceful Islam is and how it protected the Jews. I think nobody in their right mind would uh, try to spread the notion that Islam is peaceful and then bring up Jews. I mean, are you kidding me? Let me share this uh, here. Uh, Muhammad made many prophecies. Muslims around the world believe in Muhammad's prophecies, which are uh, bound to come true. Let's see one of those prophecies, which is uh, extremely famous in uh, the Muslim world. Let's see what that prophecy says. This one is very well known. It is very uh, well backed up, extremely authentic by Islamic standards. It says, Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger as saying, the last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree, and a stone or a tree would say, Muslim, servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the tree, but the tree Gargad would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. This is in many Muslim sources, in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, Riyadh al-Salihin, which is a uh, book which uh, compiles all the authentic uh, reports of Muhammad. Put this into your head, let this sink in everybody. Everybody who doesn't know about this, who has heard about this for the first time, look at what this says and let this go through your mind. Does this sound like peace? Does this sound like it teaches Muslims to be peaceful? Let me tell you what it teaches. I was a Muslim. I come from a very religious Muslim family. I uh, grew up with Muslims and Muslim families who believed in the, the most apocalyptic yeah. uh, nonsense, who believed in the, the, the imminent coming of the end. Oh, yeah. I remember times where I would sit down and I was told that the Jews will soon fight us and we should slaughter them and even over. trees okay. would protect can, them. Can, this I, is can I respond to some of that uh, real quick? It. Okay, so basically the hadith you are quoting, this is only talking about the Jews who are following the Antichrist. Okay, so this is not talking about all Jews. And this is an end time prophecy over here. Okay, so this is clearly no teaching that we should kill Jews or anything like that. You're reading that into the text. Once again, another malicious, nefarious spin upon our scripture. But I think both uh, Sam, I'm sorry, <laughs> David and Apostate Prophet, they are not able to refute the historical fact that, yes, if 929 saved the Jews from the genocide of Christianity, they are not able to refute the fact that it ended 600 years of war. So they basically started bringing up other issues. But what about this? What about this? Why did the wars continue? And I'll, I'll try to address all these points one at a time. Listen, if you don't hear me addressing some argument, it's not because I don't have an answer. It's because they're throwing a lot at me. And I'm an old man now, so <laughs> I'm trying to address all their points. So I think, you know, it, it, it would put some ridiculous spin, again, on the 929, 491 spot check. That's just not for all people. Okay, it's just for some people. I didn't get it at all, wherever he was going with that. But anyways, I want to uh, just respond very quickly to the misquoted hadith. Wood said, okay, wait a second. Where did the Quran that says to, you know, uh, you know, this is that we're here to save Jews? Chapter 4, verse 75. What? This is the reason why you fight against non-believers. Not because of their unbelief as apostate prophet misquoted the Quran. He said it's because they're unbelievers. That's not what the Quran says. The Quran said in 475, and why don't you fight in the way of Allah against the disbelievers? You see, helpless men, women, women, and children crying out, Our Lord, deliver us from this town whose people are oppressive. Appoint us one who will basically protect us and save us. That's the reason why we fight against non-believers. So now he misquoted the hadith and said, I have been ordered to fight the people yeah. until they testify. None has a right to be worshipped uh, against Allah. Oh, can, I, can I also say something? Sure. Yeah. My time's up. Yeah, all right. So first of all, uh, this um, I said that not everybody uh, agree with each other. There are, for example, I disagree. I have said it uh, from the beginning. I disagree with the uh, meaning of kuf that is disbelieved. I said, chapter 16, verse 83, they recognize the favor of Allah, then deny it. Uh, then most of, uh, and it says, Allah says, and most of them are kafir. And then uh, um, AP said that, uh, yes, they, they say, uh, Muslims say that uh, he should be killed. And I, uh, I have to say that, yes, he will help. He helped them by uh, quoting this all the time that Quran, Islam says that the uh, 
uh, what is it, the apostate should get killed, despite this is absolutely uh, a big lie. And then he said this, uh, you know, about this uh, prophecy of the prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Quran chapter 46, verse 9 says, I'm no different from uh, the others messengers, other messengers, nor do I know what will happen to me uh, or to you. I only follow what is inspired to me. Uh, to me, I am no more than a clear warning. Chapter 7, verse 187. They ask you, O Muhammad, about the hour. When its arrival, say its, uh, its knowledge is only with my Lord. None will reveal its time except him. It uh, lays heavily upon the heavens and the earth. It will not come to you upon except uh, uh, unexpectedly. The, they ask you as if you are familiar with it. Say it is its knowledge is only with Allah, but most of the people do not know. There are many, many other verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Prophet Muhammad doesn't know when the hour comes and doesn't know the future. And these hadiths, they go against Quran and apostate prophet take these uh, hadiths. And I uh, was trying to play that, uh, you know, that video uh, clips that I have taken from his, uh, you know, his talk, uh, uh, you, know, you know, speech with uh, uh, Young Don that he uh, made him in just that one hour to hate all Muslims, okay? And I, I want to please, uh, have, because I have recorded that, I want to play that one if it is possible somehow. Let me see if I can um, video, okay? I want to share video. You, uh, you want to actually play the clip right now? It's a very, very short clip, okay? It doesn't, um, I don't know why it doesn't allow me. If, if it if it works, I'm okay because Muji's been pretty patient with the yeah yes yeah. yes. But it I, I click on share. It says it's, it's, it also, by the way, Muji, it's it's very impressive how you it, made it, it appear allow. made it okay. appear as if it is my fault that Muslims tell me that I should be killed. Yes, because, no, I, no. because I gave shame on you, AP. No, 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 it's it, no Shame I'm on saying, you, AP. No, no, I didn't say. It. Look, don't, don't change again my words. You, you see here, you change my word. I said you are helping them as well. Okay. This, despite it is not what um, all Muslims believe in that, okay, and it is not what Islam says. I know that that is. Well, what about what about Nader? Nader, do you believe that uh, people who leave Islam and who openly speak against Islam uh, should be executed? So basically, do you agree with the majority opinion within uh, Islamic within the Islamic scholarly consensus about the killing of apostates? Yeah, it's not majority. The, well, I don't think that's the majority opinion, but no, I don't think uh, apostates should be killed. And there's reason, and there's evidence from the Quran and Hadith on that. In fact, I have no problem with you, Ridwan. You have a problem with me. You don't want to talk to me or see me. I mean, we we're both from Peoria, Illinois. I guess uh, well, you're from Bloomington. So I'm not the one who has a the problem with apostates. It's the apostates who have a problem with me. I like them. So, yeah, but we'll we'll yeah. get to the discussion of apostates at, an, at another time. Hold up! Did he just dox the apostate prophet in the middle of a discussion about killing yeah. apostates? Well, it, it was a very, very inaccurate doxing, but still, it's it's all right. <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, yes. Anyway, all right, back to so, Muji. Yeah. So, so it is not uh, you and uh, I asked once. Uh, what is it? it? Because what I'm saying and many Muslims say also is not out of context. Okay, it is Quran. Quran says in many, many verses explain and there are scholars but you just always go to that what isis and taliban the extreme says that you see oh oh quran say islam say this islam say this so even if somebody doesn't know islam okay let's say uh, uh um, you know uneducated muslim and think that yes islam say that ladies want to kill you okay so you if i'm there and i want to say that no islam doesn't say this okay and he's going to kill you yeah would you support me at that time and say that no what uh, muji says is islam would you do that i asked this Haris, uh, sultan this question he said yeah in that moment i to save my life i will lie okay despite first of all it's not i, I wouldn't i wouldn't i would say that you are uh, lying that you are full of uh, yeah, so, so you're with and Allah. <laughs> and, that, and, that is, and that Islam is actually uh, exactly yeah, yeah. what this terrorist who is about to kill me is yes. practicing. Yeah, okay. So, so you would. Uh, I, I wish, I wish, so you, I wish you would also re yeah. refrain from lying and actually read the Quran and the Hadith as they are, as as the violent. No, no, no. I said, okay, so you said, you said Quran and Hadith. How about Quran? 
Okay. Is there anything in Quran that says that I have to kill apostates? Can you give me a single? No, there, no, no, there isn't. There is not. So, there is not. There, there is there is a hadith which explains that. Which so, is why. So, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, 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 yeah. There, and to be clear, the the Quran does say that Muslims have to obey all of Muhammad's decisions, and Muhammad exactly. declared yeah. that apostates had to be killed. Yeah, Even in Shia. Okay, can, can, can I jump yeah. in real quick here? Yeah. I just, but, but, I just, yeah. So I just wanted to just quickly address. Cause there's so many points over here. You know, uh, a hadith was quoted where Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that I have been ordered to fight the people until they testify that none has the right to be worshipped. And so this is a commonly used hadith by these guys, but it is but it, it is taken out of context. So when Muhammad said, "Listen, I've been ordered to fight them until they testify that none has the right to be worshipped," so they are trying to infer that if they say no, well, you kill them. Let's find out if that's true. So in the following hadith, which we have over here. <clears throat> just paraphrasing over here, somebody went to go kill Muhammad. He picked up a sword to kill him, but the sword dropped out of his hand. Muhammad then picks up the sword and he says, who is going to save you from me? He says, testify that I am the messenger of Allah. But now look what this guy says. He's got the sword right above his head. Now, normally most people would be like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> but this guy says, no, but I promise that I will never fight any, I will never fight against you nor support anybody against you. The prophet let him Go. Why? Because God said in chapter 491, if they restrain their hands from fighting, nor offer you peace, well, those people, then you can kill them. So here we see Muhammad is the best interpreter of chapter 4, verse 91, not David or, or apostate prophet. And so when you quote that hadith, you need to quote this one here. So what we see here is just this profound misunderstanding, ignorance of the Islamic texts. Okay, you just can't take that statement and run with it. You need to. So let's let's it. let's yeah. let, let's uh, deconceptualize well, this well, and, well, and talk well, about well, this. Well, I just wanted to uh, uh, give ahead. a quick response here. Um, so my my overarching theory, and the theory of various Muslim scholars over the centuries, and what I regard as the only plausible method of interpreting the Quran, is that the revelations changed over time, depending on the circumstances of the Muslim population. So that when Muhammad was a persecuted prophet peace and tolerance when they could fight defensively then it's hey let's raid caravans and so on because you know we have to get back at these guys and then uh when he's the most powerful force in arabia then it's violently subjugate um everyone and we keep hearing these passages from these uh you know this defensive stage and then using that to reinterpret the commands of the offensive stage uh and then nadir in response quotes a passage from the expedition of Dat al Rika, which is uh, 625 AD, in other words, smack dab in the middle of the defensive jihad stage that doesn't refute anything. He says we're we're misquoting this hadith. Let me just let me just let me just read it. Sahih Muslim number 33. It has been narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight against people. <laughs> Notice that's pretty general, right? It's not people who are attacking you. I've been commanded to fight against people people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and they establish prayer and pay zakat. And if they do it, if they do, if they do what? If they say Muhammad is a true prophet, that uh, uh, then their blood and property are guaranteed protection on my behalf. So Nadir, that, that was what Nadir, the, the passage that Nadir quoted, if we just put them side by side with this, it would be a contradiction. But we don't want to say that Muhammad's just contradicting himself. So what happens? You put these things in context, and as Islam expands, it becomes increasingly uh, more violent and tends well, to fight people let me, let me, let me respond I wanna, for I give, being unbelievers. Okay. I can give you a, a two quick. quick two minute response, Nadir, and then we've got okay. to go into this. We have got one multiple short section points, before we go into the Q and A that I want to get to, and then the yeah. closings, then the Q and A. So short. And Look at all the multiple points of failure. Number one, the text says I have been commanded to fight. It doesn't say you have been commanded to fight. That's the first point of failure. Second, is it fight the people? Why doesn't it say the disbelievers? Who are the people? Even till today, scholars don't even know who the people are. That's number two. He said, okay, but it's. It's, it's not refuting my point, it's contradicting. There's no contradiction between the text which I quoted and what you quoted. When the, it said, I have been ordered to fight the people until they testify. But the, what I'm quoting you is, what if they say, no, I will not be a Muslim. So, but you know what? I'm not gonna fight against you. And when Muhammad heard those words, he put down the sword and the guy walked away. And he said, I came from the, from the best of mankind. So one good thing I did like about David, he walked back that nonsense about, this is the defensive stage. It's my theory. He said, it's a theory, and I'm glad you said that. 
But this in reality is his nefarious, malicious interpretation of our text. There are no stages, okay? I have read this, I've been looking, I've been reading the Quran and Hadith, and I'm looking for these stages. It's not, He's he has got this uh, malicious uh, interpretation of our books. So he was reading all that into it, okay? So I think that the main point here, there's no getting around the 491 spot check. Okay, the 491 spot check says you need a warrant to go out and kill people. And it tells you the list. Are they peaceful? Are they restraining their hands? Okay, well, if they're not doing that, then you can clear them. Well, you got a warrant in that case. And somehow they're trying to weasel their way around the 491 spot check. It doesn't work. But I think that, uh, you know, I wasn't able to address all the points. There's so many points flying left and right. But the most important thing I think over here is, you know, the, the reasons for warfare. The Quran lists the reasons of why you go fight all non-believers. And when you read the list, they're all really noble. They're all really good reasons. Like, for example, you see these people persecuted. They're crying out, who will rescue me? You know, that's a very good reason. And so one of the th things I love about Islam, when you do look at the reasons behind warfare, they're all noble and gotta good. Jump. So got to jump into... What we're going to do now is we did this new, you could say, feature on Modern Day Debate where we ask the audience, we poll them on what subtopic under the broader topic of the debate question for the night they'd like to have talked about by each of our guests. The one that was the most popular of we had Quranic verses, we had Hadith verses, we had is Osama bin Laden a true Muslim, and then we had is ISIS Islamic. So that was actually, namely, is Islamic. ISIS Islamic was the most popular topic or I should say subtopic of tonight's debate that people wanted to hear all four of our guests weigh in on so I want to give each of you a chance I want to start with apostate prophet then we'll go over to perfect Dawah, then we'll go to David and then we'll go to Nadir and then we'll go into those closing statements we'll give you each about a minute thanks so very much apostate prophet the floor is all yours well thank you so much um, I want to say uh, wait a second I just want to keep track of my time in order to not um, go over it. So um, whether ISIS are Muslims or not, well, I, I want to quickly say, um, I think the debate today is very much, um, it, it, it's, it's done, it's over. Um, we have presented everything that the Quran says, everything that the Hadith say. Uh, the Quran cl clearly ordered the Muslims to fight the disbelievers. Um, at first, I, I heard for well, many we'll minutes from the Muslim after side. This, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. sure. Um, you do. So, okay. So you, now you want me to, for three minutes, talk about that? Or... <laughs> just a, just for about a minute or so. Okay. Whether sure. or not ISIS okay. is okay. Islamic. Okay. Um, is ISIS Islamic? I would say they are Islamic in the sense that uh, they certainly are Muslims. Their leadership, the people who were in high ranks uh, within ISIS and the, and the people who joined ISIS were, um, were truly uh, under the assumption that they are Muslims and that they follow Islam and that this is what Islam requires from them. They had all the sources, all the backing from uh, religious history and uh, scholarly authorities from the last 1,400 years, which told them that they have to establish a caliphate and fight for Islam, fight the disbelievers and also fight those within who uh, refuse to obey Islam. In that sense, they certainly were Muslims. Does that mean all Muslims are supposed to be like ISIS? No, I don't think so. I think ISIS are actually, uh, I can say, very extreme within the Muslim community, and most Muslims do not agree with ISIS. Uh, but that doesn't make them non-Muslims. They certainly were Muslims. You got it? And then right. perfect hour? Mm, yeah, um, I would like to say um, if ISIS had the uh, oil like Iranian uh, ISIS regime, then the West wouldn't highlight them so much because Iranian regime has killed, massacred millions of people that ISIS didn't reach to do. But uh, unfortunately, the West doesn't talk about uh, Iranian ISIS regime because Iranian regime has oil and gas and they uh, even try to help them to save them despite people uh, on the street are... And Iranian regime is not, they don't believe in anything but money, okay? So they abuse religion to oppress people so that they can rob people. And the West support them because they 
inflame the, the Middle East and they can sell their weapons to the Middle East and they can buy cheap oil and then Iranian people uh, regime the, the, uh, those oil money that they take, they bring them to USA, to, to Canada mostly, uh, and uh, they put them in their banks. So there are so many reasons that why the West support uh, the ISIS regime of Iran. So ISIS is not that just that organization. Iranian regime is much worse than uh, that ISIS organization. And, but uh, unfortunately, the West doesn't talk about uh, this uh, regime and doesn't uh, you know, say what they are doing because they, they, they need them, unfortunately. So these are not religion. These are just you know, business and politics. You got it. And we'll go over to David. Well, uh, we, we agree on something. Uh, Iran is pretty terrible. Um, as for ISIS, I mean, it, it, you're going to have to really break down why they would not be Muslims. Um, are they reciting the Shahada? Yes. Do they believe in the five pillars? Yes. Do they believe in the articles of faith? Yes. So, uh, but that doesn't mean they're they're Islamically correct on anything. And but if you're if you're going to say you have to be Islamically correct on on everything in order to be uh, Islamic, then you're going to rule out lots and lots and lots of Muslims. You're going to find out there's there, there's almost uh, no Muslims in the entire world. And so, uh, I mean, if you look at what they're fighting for, they're fighting to revive the caliphate, um, to bring about, you know, the, the, the prophecies of Islam um, so that Islam can start expanding again. They were uh, trying to crack down on um, on apostasy and hypocrisy because they didn't believe that Allah is going to bless the Muslim community to take over the world until they deal with these problems in society. And that's why the leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, gave himself that name, the Abu Bakr of Baghdad. He's taking on the role of Abu Bakr, who, as AP pointed out earlier, uh, went on a killing spree of people who had declared themselves Muslims but were not living appropriately in order to cleanse the Islamic community in the eyes of ISIS. That is what prepared the Muslim community to go on its conquering spree. And so they're trying to do the same thing. If you want to say they're wrong about this or that, you could say that. But um, to say that they're not Muslims or not Islamic would be a, a huge stretch that I think would rule out pretty much all Muslims. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> should I go real quick? Um, yep. Yeah. So let me give you a better source of this information than than apostate prophet and David Wood and uh, the U.S. military. You know, they've researched this topic, and not only that, but many different organizations like the Rand Corporation. And from their findings, they will never hear any expert from the military calling the uh, calling ISIS uh, Islamic. I just want to quote one guy. Now, I'm not cherry picking here. I will quote, I can give you many references from the military who is basically, you know, uh, denying this claim. I want to quote Carter uh, Malkisian. <clears throat> He's the author of the American War in Afghanistan. He served as a civilian advisor in Iraq and Afghanistan and was a senior advisor uh, to General Joseph Dunford. And it goes on. Look what he says on his research of this topic. He says Islam is a source of unity and inspiration not of terrorism or an atrocity. That's his quote. I'm not cherry picking it. Oh, maybe this guy said something nice about Islam. I can give you many references like this. I want to give you another source of, uh, from the military, uh, David Petraeus. Now listen, I, I've been following him for over 10 years now. He spoke a lot on this topic. Guess what you don't hear him saying? Oh, they're just being real good Muslims. They're just following Islam. The people who are experts on this topic you will never hear them say that nonsense. Time. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to these guys. Follow the experts. You got it. We'll, we'll jump into these closing statements as well. want to say thank you very much to our guests. It's been a tremendous one. And stick around, folks. We still have the Q&A as we'll zip through those questions. We're going to start with, as we started with, at the very beginning, Apostate Prophet and David Wood. We're going to start with him as well for a six-minute closing, split between the two of them for three minutes from each. Thank you very much, Apostate Prophet. The floor is all yours. Um, thank you so much. I think um, I think the topic is very clear. Uh, the result of it is very clear. We have demonstrated many sources in which um, Muslims are clearly instructed to fight those who do not believe in Islam and who do not accept Islam. Um, Muslims are also uh, 
told that if their enemies, whom they are supposed to fight to begin with, uh, do not want to fight and want to make peace, then Muslims are supposed to, you know, uh, make an arrangement and find peace. But uh, does that change uh, the initial command of um, fighting those who do not who do not accept Islam? No, of course it doesn't. It's very clear. Um, Nader himself even agreed uh, at, uh, eventually that the Quran does indeed command Muslims to fight the disbelievers, but then he turned it around and said that this is actually a good thing because it uh, solved all the problems in the world, which is very ironic because all those people who were slaughtered would probably disagree with that. Islam did not spread to the whole geography that we that where Islam is practiced today by uh, spreading flowers and roses. Islam spread to most of where it is today through war. Wars. Uh, I want to, in, in fact, uh, take a quote from a very respected, very famous, very respectable individual whom uh, the Muslim world and Muslim academics know. His name is uh, Ibn Khaldun. He is considered, even in the West, as uh, a, a major forerunner of sociology. And uh, he, he's a big historian and uh, very, very, very well respected within uh, Islamic history. This is what he has to say. It in his uh, great masterpiece, Muqaddimah. In the Muslim community, the holy war is a religious duty because of the universalism of the Muslim mission and the obligation to convert everybody to Islam, either by persuasion or by force. Therefore, the caliphate and royal authority are united in Islam so that the person in charge can devote the available strength to both of them at the same time. This is uh, not what I am saying or what some bigot Islamophobe says. This is what uh, one of the great greatest historians in Islamic history, Ibn Khaldun, says, whom Muslims and non-Muslims still respect for his contributions uh, and his deep understanding of Islamic uh, culture and society and religion. Islam uh, is not merely meant to uh, take over the world until everybody believes in Islam. It is also meant to establish uh, societies in which Islam is the ruling force and uh, all the others, if they do not convert to Islam, are second-class citizens known as uh, Dhimma or Dhimmis who uh, live under Islam and who don't have the same rights as Muslims, who can't build their own uh, places of worship, who can't make noise and so on, and in which, uh, in which apostates are executed. Now, some people like uh, these gentlemen here might not entirely agree with that part, but the Islamic consensus is that this is pretty clear. Apostates are to be executed. Um, there is a lot more to that. Slavery is part of Islam. Raping slaves is part of Islam and so on. Uh, hating Jews is part of Islam. It's all pretty clear. Uh, stay away from Islam. Thank you. You got it. We'll kick it over to David Wood. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, AP quoted um, Ibn Khaldun. Uh, Abu Bakr said something very similar. Um, when he's talking to people who had declared themselves Muslims, but who were not paying the zakat properly and so on, he talked about Allah sending Muhammad with his truth to creation. And then he said, so God guided with the truth. This is Al-Tabari, volume 10. So God guided with the truth, whoever responded to him. And the apostle of Allah, with his permission, struck whoever turned his back to him until he came to Islam willingly or grudgingly struck whoever turned his back to him until he came to Islam willingly or grudgingly. So whether you want to come or, or not, um, you're coming to Islam. Um, so that's that's Abu Bakr. And of course, I'm sure <laughs> Nadir can respond with uh, General David Petraeus as, a, as an authority on Islam. Uh, we're, notice who we're quoting. Um, but the problem is whenever, no matter who we're quoting, we, we can quote the uh, most trusted hadiths, we can quote the Quran, <clears throat> and Muslims today in our world believe that they're just free to add words. So Allah says, fight those who do not believe. They add the words out of their own heads. Ah, it's fight those who do not believe and who are attacking you, even though it totally contradicts the historical context and the passage itself. Allah, uh, uh, Muhammad says, uh, you're going to fight the Jews until the, you know, the, the, the rocks and trees are calling out. Nadir says, ah, it's the Jews who are who are following the Antichrist. Muhammad said, I've been commanded to fight people, 
until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And the deer says, ah, but, you know, if I go to this other passage from earlier, then, you you know, if you try to kill Muhammad, you, 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 then you're free to leave. Um, so w- what you find is that you can basically justify anything you want if you're you, if you're willing to adopt this methodology. Um, Allah claims in the Quran over and over and over again to be clear in his revelations. 3.7, of course, of the Quran contradicts that. Muslim scholars reconcile this by claiming that Allah is clear in his commands. And if Allah is clear in his commands and he, he commands all these different things, and he says that the method to use is one of abrogation, then everything falls into place. Um, so the traditional Islamic method is you've got these different revelations at different times commanding different things. There's the doctrine of abrogation. That's how you navigate them. Muslims today say, no, the real method is we pick whichever teaching we like, and then we use that to reinterpret all the clear commands that come later that completely contradict our interpretation. And so um, I'll just say, Given the interpretations we've heard from Nadir and Muji, if these are the correct interpretations, 14 centuries of Muslims missed this. The four rightly guided caliphs missed it. Um, again, 14 centuries of Muslim scholars missed these interpretations. And so if that was Allah's intent, Allah is the worst communicator in the entire history of forever because no one is getting the truth about Islam except for these two. We'll kick it over to Muj or uh, Perfect Dawah, and then we'll kick it over to Nadir for that final three minutes. Three minutes is all yours, Perfect Dawah. Yes, uh, I would. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you know different uh, subjects that we can talk and talk and talk, but um, I have to say, uh, especially to AP, that um, uh, not everybody uh, you know believe in those uh, trash that you have been taught, like uh, your parents. Uh, you were saying in your video, were teaching you. Uh, that at the end we go and kill all Jews and uh, not everybody believe in the Islam you believe and David Wood and ISIS and Taliban believe in. So there are hundreds of millions of Muslims around the world that are peaceful and uh, they don't believe in all these, uh, you know, uh, interpretation, wrong interpretation of the Quran and then those, uh, you know, fabricated hadiths uh, that uh, you bring up uh, and share. So um, I would just uh, say that, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, ISIS, Taliban, and uh, people like you who demonize entire Muslim world are dangerous because if people, uh, as I said before, if people uh, listen to to people like you, people, um, my neighbors, they would hate me because they don't know that uh, I don't believe in such a uh, you know uh, trash, and um, they would uh, please learn a little bit more about Christianity. Love your neighbor as you love your yourself. Doesn't mean that I have to go. Uh, you know, to my Christian neighbors and say, I love you. And, uh, you know, I mock their religion and say your religion is terrible and so on. So uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, has taught you these beautiful words. So please follow them correctly. Okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And stay away, uh, I say, um, for, uh, to everybody, I say, stay away from, uh, you know, ISIS and Taliban and these two gentlemen, <laughs> I would say. You got it. We'll kick it over yeah. to Nadir. Thank you very much. Sivis peccum parabellum. Now, if you want peace, prepare for war. The misunderstanding of Hasid Prophet and David Wood have is that you got to be in a complete defensive posture, but we know historically that has never worked. That's why that fourth century writer wrote that, and it has played out true time and time again. Every peaceful nation engages in some kind of offensive war. Why? Because you got to fight them over there so you don't have to fight them over here. It was really funny to see David Wood and Apostate Prophet run from the historical facts. The very verse they are complaining about, chapter 9, verse 29, it ended 600 years of never-ending war. And all the atrocities which were taking place between the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, they conquered both, and, and, and it made them as nation, I mean, citizens under one nation. But not only that, we saw from the Jewish Virtual Library, 929 had a wonderful impact on humanity. It, it, uh, it also saved the Jews 
from the genocide of Christianity. And I loved how the, how the writer of the Jewish virtual library says things were going on in the Arabian desert. The, the, the end of Judah, the end of Jews and Judaism was imminent. But something was going on in the Arabian desert that would change the course of the world and save them from the genocide of Christianity. And that is a very same verse that these guys are, are, are complaining about. So that is why I say Islam is a religion of peace. We also saw some cheap shots in their closing where they're trying to show that Islam was, was, um, was um, or something about forced conversions. But remember my prophecy in the beginning of this debate. I said, we're going to chase him out of the Quran. We're going to chase him out of the Hadith. And then they're going to go to commentaries and try to quote people's commentary, like Ibn Khaldun. And that prophecy came true. That prophecy. They were quoting commentaries, and when in their closing statements, when they're like, okay, Nadir can't touch me now, <laughs> and point out that I'm just quoting commentaries, because they couldn't argue their case from the Quran. They couldn't argue their case from the Hadith because of the Hadith, which I quoted, which explained Muhammad's statement, where he put down the sword, when he said, hey, listen, I'm not going to accept Islam, but hey, I'm not going to fight against you. Muhammad put down the sword. And he, and he told him to go ahead. And, and, and he went back to his people and said, I have just come from the best of mankind. I believe this is an, a, an airtight case for why Islam is a, is a peaceful religion. Because even though there is, uh, you know, war passages, there, this, is, this, this excludes peaceful people. And we've seen this played out in the caravan rates. Uh, they put some nasty interpretation spin on the caravan rates to, show, to try to make it Muhammad was the aggressor. But they showed no evidence to back up their claims. So uh, uh, we saw that. Okay, it's not funny. Time's up. With that, we'll kick into the q and want to say thank you very much for your questions, folks. All of our guests are linked in the description, so if you'd like to hear more, you certainly can by clicking on those links below. You can even have more than one tab open. You can have five tabs. You can click on each of our guest links in the description box. That includes, if you're listening via the podcast, all of our debates end up on the Modern Day Debate podcast within 24 hours of the debate, and our guests, AP, David Wood, Nadir, and Perfect Dawa are all linked in the description box there, too. With that, this first question coming in from, do appreciate it, Zagros Azkan says, according to Perfect Dawa, are Smurfs, I think he means like the blue cartoon characters, Muslims. I don't know what he means, but <laughs> Perfect Dawa is me. You know what he knows what it means? Okay, Sunflower. This is, they said, the dear and perfect hour right now in Iran, schoolgirls and women are removing their hijabs to protest the death of a woman who was killed by cops for refusing to wear a hijab. Does Islam permit protests of this nature? All right. Well, um, if I could just answer, you go ahead, go ahead. Since yeah, you're Iranian, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a good yeah. source. Yes, yes. Uh, that's uh, absolutely, um, I said that this regime is oppressive. Uh, a mafia regime, and they don't believe in anything. Even uh, if you if you had the minimum uh, knowledge uh, about uh, the you know I I about Iran, you would know that Khomeini's deputy, whose name was Ayatollah Montazri, he went against him because he saw that despite he was for me he was a uh, extremist himself, but because he really believed in Islam. So he went against Ayatollah Khomeini and said that, no, what you do is not Islamic, okay? And you massacring people, all these things you do is not Islamic. That's why he lost his, uh, you know, his uh, uh, place and he didn't become leader. And, and another corrupted liar, mafia man, he became uh, the leader. So this regime is a mafia regime and has nothing to do with Islam. Whatever they do is to stay in power and they are a bunch of robbers. They rob the country. They have uh, billions of dollars. That The leader was very poor. Now he's hundred uh, over hundred billion dollars rich so they don't believe in anything and whatever they do is not islamic of course protesting and the, but i just say fast the biggest enemy of this regime is uh, a muslim organization by the way you got okay. it this one from messiah says quran 812 it says allah will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers smite ye above their necks and smite all of their fingertips off of them why cut all their fingertips off yeah, uh, I can answer that very quickly. Uh, so basically, this is something which a punishment from Allah. It doesn't tell Muslims to punish your uh, your enemies in this way. Now, one thing which actually wasn't raised in this debate is 
Where in the Quran do you find passages where it teaches you to go into a child's bedroom and stab him to death, like inside David Wood's Bible? You know that there's verses which teach us to murder innocent women and children. And what we found in tonight's debate, you don't find that in the Quran. And that's the difference between uh, the Bible and the Quran. And, and actually, one of the things that you have seen, of Islam actually corrects the terror. The 491 spot checks forbids people to walk into children's bedroom and stab them to death like David Wood's Bible teaches. And I will actually put out a challenge. Show me in the Quran where it explicitly teaches to kill children or anything like that. You'll never find that. That's terror. That's what you find in the Bible. This one coming in from Kurt Hanneman says, if the Quran is the perfect word of Allah for all time and easy to understand, why do so many Muslims and Imams interpret it violently? Uh, I can answer that very quickly. If you look at what Muslims say today about what I told you, Islam is peaceful with those people are peaceful. If you go to just type Islam is peaceful with those who are peaceful, dash Islam QA. Islam QA is one of the biggest or most reputable Islamic scholarly websites, and you will get the Islam, you will get the religious edict on that. That's what they all agree. It is the Islamic lands which was attacked and, and invaded by Russia. Israel and other than them. So a lot of this is is defending the homeland. So it was only after the invasions is when you saw this type of reaction coming. So because so that is a real source of why we see terrorism. This one coming in from Deej says Pew Research in 2015 found that 60 million Muslims in the Middle East supported ISIS. Over 250 million Muslims mm -hmm. answered undecided regarding ISIS. How are that many people, quote unquote, misinterpreting Islam if it's peaceful? I have never seen any statistic like that. I have already shown you statistics where it was showing that the, the people. I mean, the, 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 the source is very clearly the source yeah. is very clearly given there. I mean, if you want to contest the source, I would suggest yeah. going there and analyzing yeah. that. But the, well, here's the thing: it's okay. not just about it's not just about supporting ISIS. Uh, half or more than half of Muslims uh, agree that, uh, that 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 Sharia should be the law. The, um, mm -hmm. Half okay. half of Muslims agree that apostasy yeah, should be. Yeah, I executed. also yes. I most also most Muslims agree that uh, adulterers should be stoned to death. Uh, that uh, criticizing Islam should be should be illegal. Yes, most actually, no, no, uh, actually, don't. actually, eighty percent or so okay. believe that. All right. Where uh, did you get that? So, so, and, and these are in peer research, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. these are very, very common, very common uh, numbers. Most Muslims believe that Islam actually orders these things that we talk about. By the way, well, if you want to look at actual Islamic history, I would suggest this book, In God's Path, by Robert Hoyland. You can see a very clear. Uh, history of how Islam actually spread. Don't believe me. Don't believe these guys. Read this book. Look for yourself. Uh, okay, believe in that book. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yes. I, I want to give you a chance yeah. to respond, though. So let's say for the sake of argument, Nadir, and perfect Allah, granting that the statistic is true, what would you say? Yeah, so this has already been explained by the military experts. And I think the one of, I will quote is Chuck Schumer. You know, he said, the reason why people supported ISIS was this was a response to the barbarity of Bashar Assad. The father of ISIS is Bashar Assad. When they witnessed the atrocities committed and how the whole world just turned their backs to what was going on in Syria, this is what fueled ISIS. This is what fueled people from coming all over the world to fight into ISIS. Because in the beginning, ISIS, they didn't really know the ideology. They r rushed into this, then they found out, oh my God, this is what they're doing. ISIS was actually killing more Muslim people than, 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 the, than the Syrian regime. So you, it's the political, what all the experts agree on. You know, they all agree that the reason of what created ISIS, it was number one, the religious persecution at the hand of the Shias inside Iraq. It was a barbarity of what took place in Syria. This is what fueled ISIS and the support for it. But if you take that same poll today, now that we know what ISIS is all about, nobody supports them. It's the Muslims who fought and defeated them. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Radar Apologetics says, love this. Big shout out to Apostate Prophet and David Wood from Rabbi Eduardo at Radar Apologetics. Thanks for that. And Anton Gomez says, question for AP and David Wood, what is your opinion about Muhammad Ajab? Muhammad Ajab? Correct. 
<laughs> a- AP, you can vouch because we talk behind the scenes. Do I love this guy or do I love this guy? <laughs> you absolutely, absolutely love Mohammed Hijab. I know that. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, Whenever I bring up Mohammed Hijab to, to David Wood in private, he's like, uh, or when I say hey, Mohammed Hijab actually uh, went on this show or he talked to Jordan Peterson, David is like, <laughs> fantastic. You know? Yeah. So, and and, and, and I'll, I'll just I'll just say why that is. And you can include Ali Dawa and... Um, uh uh what's his name the guy what's his name that uh man what's that other guy's name daniel hakikichu yeah hakikichu uh yeah it's it's basically when when i started you know debating islam and so on this was in the you know what 2005 2006 i don't remember sometime back then and the everyone almost every muslim apologist you talk to there's no death penalty for apostasy islam is all about peace uh it's all islam is all about freedom and all, all these things and and you, you know we're reading the muslim sources and thinking that that's not that's not what these sources say and yet it's what their their popular apologists were saying and then you get this sort of new generation of muslims and they're saying basically what a lot of the muslim sources say and it's just refreshing right it's just cool oh my goodness please be honest so that when people see you they're they're getting a more accurate picture of what, what well, well, David, is. you know what we're saying is that when we open up the quran we don't see verses to stab babies to death like what is in the bible and that is why christians run away i would um, i would well, say well, some, well, my, well, my opinion well, on oh well, I, I just wanted to say if if, if nadir is if nadir is claiming that and, and we're, we're debating now um, the Quran orders Jews and Christians to judge by the gospel and to obey the, the Torah and the gospel. So you if you're saying that, if you're if you're, if you're saying if you're yeah. saying that's in the Torah, if you're saying that's in the Torah, and Allah commands <laughs> yeah. to obey the Torah, then that would mean that Allah is commanding it. And you, so you've just refuted your own God no, and shown no, no, that, that it's that, far more, it's far, topic, it's far right? more violence. Look, he can't. He <laughs> but, cannot but just, defend, might, he cannot yeah, just, 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 just to quickly, just to quickly answer the just to. This. You notice how you, it's a very, it's a very nice distraction from the, the Jews. The, the Jews, no, the Jews, teach to follow that stuff. Okay, the Jews so, came to Muhammad and they asked David, to settle we'll dispute that and, at another okay, time. Right? You don't listen okay, to let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about Muhammad Hijab. Let's talk about Muhammad Hijab. So, I would say, in my opinion, I just want to say clearly if you want to learn about uh, true Islam, fall uh, listen to those Muslim apologists who are actually popular with Muslims, uh, not not Ahmed and uh, Muji here. Listen to Muhammad Hijab, Daniel Hikikachu, Ali Dawa, they will show you very clearly, without us needing to do anything, what real Islam is. Find out about those guys. And, and, and by, uh, by, 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 by the way, that this is this because this is similar to the point about like ISIS. Why did so many people follow ISIS and so on? It's hey, if Islam doesn't really teach any of this, why when you have someone like let's say Ali Dawa say, yeah, we're going to kill you, and that, that you know that we're proud of that. And he becomes one of the most popular people around. And it's so it's why are why are people drawn to to these guys rather than to, let's say, Muji? I, I love I, hey, I like Muji's version of Islam way better than I like these other guys. So why aren't more people following Muji rather than, you know, yeah, Adawa just, and Hakikachu yeah. and Muhammad I just, I just, Yeah, I just quick want to say that that's uh, one thing that I would like to say. Those who really want to fight these extremists. Please go and subscribe because many times they say that, oh, nobody follow you. Nobody just, you know, uh, believe in what you say. You are just, uh, you know, few. So please go and subscribe and support my work against these, uh, you know, extremists. And uh, yes, uh, I myself uh, say that they are uh, really, uh, you know, harming Islam. Uh, these people like Daniel Hargachu and uh, Ali Dawa and many Muslims have also problem with their with their uh, version of Islam and the way they, they you know, they do Dawah, unfortunately. Would yeah. you say they're not true Muslims? I, I hate to say this, but we've got to move. We've got so many questions. This one yes. from Kavi Mom says, is the Iran, Iranian government wrong to subjugate women? Yes, yes. I think so. Yeah, 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 let, let, let me tell you, yes, uh, yeah. definitely they, they abuse such a thing as a oppressive, you know, uh, uh, to, to oppress people, to say that we are in control, yeah? They don't believe themselves. I can show, if I was able to, uh, you know, 
share with you, you would see their children, these uh, authorities, these uh, leaders, their children, when they come to the West, they are totally naked, you know, they do all kind of things that is forbidden inside Iran. First of all, they are robbers. They have billions of dollars, millions of dollars outside the country. And we share such things on the, uh, you know, on media that look, their children, just 5,000, 5,400, uh, uh, you know, Iranian um, leaders' children are in, in the West and they are citizens there. And you cannot uh, imagine how they dress when they go in Iran and how they dress when they go out. So they don't believe at all themselves in what they preach, you know, they, and what they, you know, force people uh, inside Iran. It is just beca- uh, for, you know, oppressing people and keeping control and robbing the people. That's all. You got it. Thank you very much for this question. Coming in from Helper of Man says, would AP and David be considered peaceful under Sharia law or according to Muhammad? No, we, we would we would be considered uh, people who spread corruption in the land in Surah 5, verse 33 of the Quran. And matter of fact, that's exactly what Ali Dawa said about yeah. AP. He said, those, okay. those, those of you who, who uh, reject your religion and cause corruption in the land, that he was appealing to Surah 5, verse 33, which if you guys were talking, if, if you guys were asking, where's the Quran talk about uh, killing apostates and so on? Um, I would say because Surah 4, verse 65 commands Muslims to to follow the decisions of Muhammad, and Muhammad clearly said, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him, there you have it. But Surah 5, verse 33 uh, refers to the vague crime of uh, causing corruption in the land. And even very popular Muslims like Ali Dawa say that this would include exactly what AP does by publicly being an unbeliever and vocalizing his um, his unbelief. And me, because I'm a critic, of, I'm not an apostate, but I'm a critic of Islam. And so, yeah, we, we would not be considered uh, fine can, under can, can Islamic can law. Can We'd be killed. I would, I would like to also do that. I yeah, I just would. want to say something like a, real quickly. So, you know, we're we're kind of introducing a new can of, open up a new can of worms of apostasy, Islamic law, all in the question and answers time. So we're really not going to do justice to the topic. So I'll just make one statement very quickly. I would say no, because Islam is very flexible in, in its in its uh, laws to uh, accommodate the needs of the people. So I would say no, I, I would not see them, uh, you know, uh, as be people who would be killed, as David Wood is saying, but that's going to be another topic. But I think it is funny. I think it is really funny how, you know, the, the fact that <laughs> the Bible the... teaches to murder innocent okay, babies. I had a feeling you were going to take it <laughs> off. Right, can I, can so I, let me look at your question. Uh, can I, can I, can I respond? David. Oh, uh, so go ahead, Prabhu Dawa. Yeah, can, can I respond to that? Yep. Uh, first of all, uh, David, with that fi- uh, chapter 5, verse 33, has nothing to order Muslims to do anything. That's, a, uh, you know, uh, passive, uh, uh, you know, verbs that uh, it says that uh, this is what happens to them. And in the Quran actually explain in other verses that who does such a things to them is Farao, is the pagans themselves who, you know, uh, crucify people. And they, if they do not follow uh, Allah's commands, Allah's laws, then one day uh, it is exactly like you live by sword, you die by sword. So there is nothing in that verse that's command Muslims to do such a things against others. And in the Sharia law, I believe in, no, you are not going to be persecuted at all as long as you are not taking weapon and fighting us. Okay, that's all. Uh, well, just, just just one question, because I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, um, mm-hmm. with that in, interpretation there. But w- when that verse says, so... The, the recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet be cut off on opposite sides or be exiled from the land. That is their disgrace in this world and great torment is theirs. That's saying that because you oppose Allah and his messenger, then no. unbelievers unbelievers are going to do these things to you okay. they're going to exile yeah. you from the land and so on yeah let me tell you chapter 7 verse 124 says for oh says, i was ju- i was just looking for a yes i was oh, wondering yes. if i misunderstood no, I will, you i, I will do yes me, yes i will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides then crucify you all chapter 20 verse 71 he frau said have you believed in him before taking my permission he is surely your great one who has 
taught you magic. So I will cut off your hands and feet from alternate sides, and I will certainly, uh, uh, sorry, I will crucify you on the trunks of uh, palm trees. So this is what pagans were doing to each other. So Allah said that this is not a, uh, you know, uh, a command. So the, the, wait, wait a minute. You're not answering the question. Though the Quran clearly says there that uh, those who, uh, you know, oppose or fight Allah and His Messenger. Uh, so, their punishment is that you so, exile them or kill them or uh, yeah. crucify them or cut off their hands and feet from opposite sides. Okay. How in the world is that yes. what the Pharaoh or what others did when the Quran itself says? Okay. I'll give you a chance so, to answer yes. really quick. And then this this is actually okay. a two part question. So we're yes, still on the yes. same question. Go, go yes, ahead. Perfect. Yes. Dawa, or, yeah. Yeah, then we if, yes. If I say that if you smoke, uh, your punishment is that you get, uh, you know, cancer, it doesn't mean that I'm going to give you cancer. So there is no any command in that verse that says, and I told you, I read for that you. That doesn't make does any that? sense at all. It makes sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Yes. This one, the okay. helper of man also asked, they said, given that AP and David would be considered peaceful or not under Sharia law, they said, would it under Sharia law be lawful for David and AP to be persecuted or killed according to Islam? Not according my, uh, you know, uh, Sharia law, not mine, of course, uh, those who believe the same and we are um, definitely millions and maybe hundreds of millions, but we will grow. We are growing and if definitely in the Sharia law, we believe, no, definitely they are not going to be. Everybody are, you know, there is no compulsion in religion as long as, gotcha. as long as you don't take good, weapons. Good luck, good luck. We have we understood that. Well, what about another? What do you think? Nadir, you're going to bite the bullet? Yeah, so basically, as I told you, Islamic law is very flexible and uh, it's very accommodating. And so... Uh, I don't see any need or basically it, to make a long story short, David and apostate would basically be denied visas to come to the Islamic world. I think that's <laughs> that's the most we are going to find. That was, that was not the question. Oh, what was the question? Hey, hey, but by the way, Zakir Naik says that uh, we should be invited to Muslim countries and then we should be locked up when we get there. Yeah. yeah. But that was not the question. The question was, uh, can you repeat the question, James? Yeah, what basically whether or not AP and David should be persecuted or put to death, given yeah. that they might not be considered peaceful under Sharia law. The answer is no. They no. shouldn't be. They shouldn't. What, what wasn't, wasn't the question possible. whether uh, if if that is done to us, uh, would that be okay under, under Sharia, Sharia law? Yeah. No, it, it shouldn't be. be okay. Absolutely, it would be okay. Okay, gotcha. Okay? This one. Yeah. We must move on. Douche Canoe says, question for Muslim guests. Explain the Rashidun Caliphate and the conquest of North Africa, Middle East, and Arab Peninsula. Entire tribes were deemed apostate and slaughtered. But, but James, those tribes were going to kill a bunch of people if Muslims didn't slaughter them. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, uh, well, let, me, let me answer that. If, if, if I could. I think... So basically, no, maybe, maybe I can ask. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead if you want. Okay. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the, as I said, uh, we have different opinion, okay, according um, me and uh, those who believe the same as I believe. Uh, I mean, I know that uh, from sources that Ali Radiallah also was against, uh, you know, going uh, around and occupying other, uh, you know, nations because it goes against Quran and Quran says that fight those who fight you, okay? As, and as long as they fight you, okay? So uh, Muslims after Prophet Muhammad, the, you know, we know the, the uh, caliphs and they also had different opinions and they even had fight against each other. So everything they did wasn't according Islam and some of things they did was according Islam. So it doesn't mean that Everything they did was according Quran and Quranic teaching. So, so this is my opinion. And if they did, uh, you know, killed innocent people, and if they even attacked and occupied other countries and so on. So, uh, according our beliefs, and I said once again, I know that Ali Radiallah was against it. Okay, against going and o occupying other countries. All right, you got it. Yeah, can I say one thing real quick about that? So the. You know, the, the false premise here of this, and this is the misunderstanding uh, David had, the misunderstanding of policy prophet here, is that if you, gauge in, if you engage in offensive warfare, therefore you can never be deemed as peaceful. Wrong. Every peaceful nation has engaged in offensive warfare. One of the reasons why is so that they can give the opportunity to the North Africans 
to hear a message which would otherwise be denied to them. But that should not be your sole reason. If you're all, there should be other legitimate reasons for conquering that land. For example, improve the quality of life, remove the misery of Judeo-Christianity and bring about happiness. And that's exactly what they did. Look, the efforts which the early Muslims did, I'll disagree with Muji, but the effort, they made the right political decisions to expand. And there's, and there's many good reasons, as I stated. Why? Because they ushered in an era of science and technology, which the, which the scholars call the golden age of Islam, and they improved the quality of life of those people, as well as giving them the opportunity to hear the message of Islam, which would otherwise be denied to them. Dan, not, Nader is engaging in such double speak; it's incredible. He's saying, on one hand, that Islam is absolutely, um, you know, flexible and good for society and peaceful and this and that. On the other hand, he is uh, justifying the Rashidun Caliphate and the Islamic uh, empires and caliphates, which. Uh, went out there and uh, fought and killed and massacred those yeah. Muslims who said we don't want to be part of this empire anymore simply because they uh, they deviated from the central authority of Islam and who also went out and conquered nations in order to convert them to Islam and who also executed apostates left and right <laughs> as it was commanded. So, 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 so here is so here is the, no, it was the Rashidun Caliphate. So here is the yeah, issue. Uh, here is the issue. He on one hand says it's totally peaceful totally flexible, totally nice, nothing to fear. On the other hand, when it comes to the actual history of Islam, which was brutally bloody, he's like, well, it was no, for a good not. reason. This is double speak. <laughs> well, 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 let's see what's it. going on over really here. Quick, your response, then we got to go to the next one. Yeah, so what's happening here is a retreat. They're running away from the Quran, the Hadith, and the Sirah because they're not able to make the case from our scriptures. So they say, okay, well, let's, let's talk about what the caliphs did who came after Muhammad. And so this is very interesting to see where they think they can score some point. This is a Hail Mary attempt into the end zone to try to salvage this debate for them because they're seeing that you can't make the case from the Islamic scriptures. The decisions which the caliph made, a lot of that was political some of that was based on religious, but in the end, they made the right decision because they, they, they improved the quality of life in. for the whole world. Uh, what, what, one, what, one, 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 one second, James, because that was, a, that was an accusation against us. Just a, be very quick here. Um, the, so we, 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 we quote the Quran and the Hadith, and then our, our Muslim friends here say, ah, you're, you're, you're interpreting it wrong. So we quote Muslim scholars and so on, and, and the tafsir and the seerah and so on, uh, to show that, hey, that's, we're not inventing this. Muslims interpret it that way. Ah, then it's because we can't show that we're right from the plain statements of the scriptures, which we quoted. And so we showed that Muslim scholars down through the ages have agreed with us. And we're bad for that. We're bad for quoting what Islam's greatest scholars have said, and even even rightly guided caliphs have said. And yet Nadir is quoting yeah. uh, Chuck Schumer and General David Petraeus. Yeah, <laughs> those right. those are authorities on Islam, according to no, Nadir. So I we quote Abu Bakr. We quote Abu Bakr. We, quote, we, we quote Abu Bakr. We quote Abu Bakr. And he quotes uh, Chuck Schumer and uh, Abu, Abu Bakr is an Trist. Islamophobe, man. Now, that, I quoted them yeah, he's about a bigot. ISIS. Let me, I quoted them about ISIS. But you got to understand, the military and experts have already looked into these, this subject. And they do not come to the same conclusion that you guys do. Now, General Petraeus, other than being a general, he's also a scholar. And he has it. looked into this subject. And I think he's a better resource than you. Then Abu Bakr. Then Abu Bakr. We agree. We agree. He's Muhammad is also Abu Bakr. Muhammad That's is funny. an Islamophobe. So so now you see that little, I'm just quoting your caliphs. No, this what you're doing, you misquoted the Quran argument. is Islamophobic. You misquoted all these from, people. Yeah. The the uh, uh, to Allahu Petraeus. Uh, <laughs> Petraeus who Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> this one coming in from Bad Nate Hitu says, "Hi David, good to see you." Surah nine twenty nine, nine seventy three, and nine one twenty three are the most peaceful verses, and then a laughing emoji. I, so I think they're trolling. This one coming in from yeah, well, j just to be clear, that, that, that that's definitely trolling. Nine twenty nine says, "Fight those who do not believe." Nine seventy three is where um, Muhammad is commanded to say that he's been commanded to fight not only unbelievers, but also against hypocrites. And uh, uh, 123 says, uh, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you. Um, and so, yes, the, all these all these commands that really sound like you're just talking about unbelievers. Um, but, our, you know, our Muslim friends can add words to them. And what Allah really means in his perfectly clear verses, his perfectly clear commands, what he really means is 
only fight people who are attacking you. He just right. said it in a really, really in weird way. The 491. The 491's He meant 491. All their then he argument. said all this other stuff. Those then he said all this other stuff. Are, if they're not peaceful with you. So so every verse he quotes can be silenced by 491 spots. 491. Over. There's no abrogation. And just ignore the historical okay, context so now you of 491. Talk about abrogation. What? We talked about what? that, David. Why did Allah, just 491 quick question. blows why, it all away. Why did Allah yeah. reveal Surah 9, verse 73, Surah 9, verse 29, Surah 9, verse 123, if all he meant was Surah 4, verse 91, and yeah. it really sounds like he's saying something completely different. I mean, this would be like, you know, imagine a, a, a political leader. Imagine David, General David Petraeus saying, hey, we're going to go fight ISIS or something like that. It would have been earlier. But let's say he's saying, hey, we got to go fight uh, the Taliban. And then later on, he says, we're going to fight anyone who believes in Allah. I don't think he'd be saying, oh, well, you know, clearly he meant, you know, just the Taliban, because years later, he said, we're going to fight anyone who believes in Allah. No one would accept that. There is not a Muslim on this planet who would accept that methodology and say, oh, it's OK for him to say we're going to fight anyone who believes in Allah, because years earlier, he said we're going to fight the Taliban. No Muslim in the history of humanity would accept that. And yet when we get to Allah in the Quran, he says, fight those who do not believe in Allah. When we get to Muhammad, yeah, I've, been commanded, I've, been I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. They're, they're, then suddenly, well, as God. long as he said something earlier that's abrogated, we can apply there's that later, no and it's all fine. It's all fine. I get no getting around no that. I can give you like 25 seconds, and then we've got to go. There's no getting around the fact that the Quran and the Hadith and the Sira excludes peaceful people. We saw that with a caravan raid, which you misquoted. We saw that from the very statements in Sirah Ibn Ishaq, where Muhammad said, I wage war against those who wage war against me, but not against, but those who want peace, I'm peaceful with them. We So many quotations, it's a, it's a motif that's going all throughout our scriptures. So you can quote all these verses you want all night. It excludes peaceful people and it excludes innocent people. We've got to, you exclude it. We've got to go through, let's see, this one, Anton Gomez says, question for the Muslims, do you think secular societies are more violent than Islamic ones? Well, yeah, right. absolutely. Look, 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 if you look at the history, I mean, look look what's going, if you look at the, the, the Holocaust, you look at all these wars, there's no way you can even come, you can compare that. Look at North Korea. The world, you know, and, and, and the secular societies have done far more, have engaged in far more wars than what we have. I mean, look at look at communism. Look at look at the horrible slaughter which the communists brought to the world. This one so, coming in from Kurt Hanneman says, if the Quran is the perfect word of Allah, why does it require your interpretation? I think they're referring to such as the last one that you and David were just talking about. Yeah, yeah it's David who's spinning ridiculous interpretations of the Quran because the Quran explicitly excludes peaceful people. But not no, only that, but, but the Hadith I, but also... But let's address this yeah. question, this new question. Yeah. What, what was the question, please? They say, if the Quran is the perfect word of Allah, why does it require your interpretation? I think they're We're saying... not interpreting. We are giving you... We are yes, 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 you yes, you are. are. Yes, yes, you are. I, I give you... A, I, I give you Quran right. chapter 9, verse 29. Okay, and you, right. you reinterpret yeah. that. Okay. If, if, you, if you read it, okay, all that's right. what I mean. Yeah, Look, that, that's, that's what it's meant here. That's if you read Quran chapter 9, verse 29, okay. it clearly tells you explicitly all nothing right. else except fight those who do not believe in Islam. Okay. And you come in here and says, no, don't read that verse. We have to interpret that by looking no, at other things. Why do you can I answer this, please? Okay, please. Uh, ch Quran chapter three verse seven clearly says that uh, you're doing it. You're uh, doing it right now. Okay. Yes. Answer, <laughs> yes. I say that. Okay. Let me answer you. Okay. Please don't laugh. Okay. I'm I'm talking. All right. So Quran chapter three verse seven says that there are unspecific verses of Quran that needs interpretation, and the true interpretation of those verses is known only by Allah and those firm in knowledge. Yes. Definitely, it needs interpretation. And why it is that? So there are many uh, questions why Allah doesn't send. Uh, you can ask even David uh, why God doesn't send uh, a prophet today and explain, uh, you know, give us the biggest miracle and explain everything for us. This is the way God has, uh, you know, decided to create humanity. And this is the way he tried to uh, decided to send his message. OK, so if you, uh, you are disagree with that, you don't like that, then you can talk to uh, God uh, or Allah. You can even ask David why God doesn't send. You know, David, there is a, uh, you know, atheist, former um, Christian, uh, what is it, Christian um, 
uh, YouTuber, okay? His name is Pancrick. His only, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, request is that he's uh, wet napkins. Uh, God, if God uh, light up his na- uh, wet napkin, he will believe. Why God doesn't do that? It is the same question, okay? Why God doesn't split the moon today and show everybody the miracle? So he has decided to create us in this way and send his messages uh, because there was an atheist who, who told me why God doesn't, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, renew his messages every time. Okay, so this is how he has decided. I just wanted a quick a quick follow up to what he was yeah. saying because he keep, Muji keeps quoting sort of three verse seven, which sounds like they're they're clear verses and and unclear verses and yes. you know, bad bad people mess around with the the unclear verses. Uh, but we also look at the Quran, Surah eleven, verse one. This is a book whose verses have been made firm and free from imperfection, and then they have been expounded in detail. 12.1, these are verses of the clear book. 15.1, these are the verses of the book and a Quran that makes things clear. 24.46, certainly we have revealed clear communications. 26.2, these are the verses of the book that makes things clear. 27.1, these are verses of the Quran, a book that makes things clear. 28.2, these are verses of the book that makes things clear. 57.9, he it is who sends down clear communications upon his servant that he may bring you forth from utter light into dark, in, from utter dark darkness into light. So, so the problem here is you've got this, you've got all these verses. This book is so clear. It's, it's perfectly you, clear. Yeah, it's perfectly you, clear. But David, then you've got three, seven, and it says it's unclear. And so even the issue of the clarity of the Quran is not clear. You need interpreters. You need interpreters okay. to even understand what the Quran is saying. And the, the way they've interpreted it is that Allah is clear in his commands, but there are theological claims that might be confusing because human beings can't get their minds around them. If he means something else and commands like fight those who do not believe in Allah, are just not clear. Well, if fight those who do not believe in Allah doesn't mean fight those who, well, who do not believe in Allah, you can reinterpret anything. You can reinterpret a, a, a command to do anything. So just believe in one God. Well, maybe he means believe in 10 gods. You can just make it whatever you want. Yeah, you can do that. You, you no, can, hold you on, can let, me, just, let me say something here. What, 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 me, what it means is, is the Quran, I, the Quran is, is clear. I, just, hey guys, I, do this, I just, just want like, to say one thing, please. 20 seconds from uh, Perfect Dawah, because we haven't heard a lot from him, and yes. then we've got to go to the next question, because okay. there's just so many questions we got to go through still. Okay. Yeah, I just say that you can do whatever you want. That's up to you. And it's between you and, uh, you know, God. All right. You can do whatever you want. This is the, the book and it's explained. And, uh, you, you know, that's why we have tafsir. That's uh, because it needs to be, interpre- uh, you know, interpreted. It cannot be. Quran says itself clearly that it needs to be interpreted. Some verses of Quran. Okay. Yes. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. The Red Vox says, can disbelief or criticizing in Islam be seen as attacking Islam, thus resulting in retaliation? No, I don't think that. There were, during the life of Muhammad, there were many people who criticized him. There was Abu Adr, Abu Adr, there was Sohail bin Amr, and the list goes on. There were many people who did criticize Muhammad, and Muhammad didn't do anything with them. I think, you know, going back, you know, as far as fighting the non-believers, the hadith I quoted was very clear and explicit, no interpretation needed. There's two kinds of idolaters, two types of non-believers. They're the ones who fought against Muhammad, and then they're the ones who Muhammad was at peace at, against them. Muhammad fought against those who fought him, but he was peaceful with those who were at peace with him. Game over. Okay. Tap out. Yeah. This destroys all if of the wood. No, 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 it, it destroys Allah, because if you're saying what he what only what he means in these early revelations and then his final revelations, his final marching orders, he says something that sounds completely different. Fight those That's who do not believe. David. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're rambling. Fight those who do not believe is my interpretation. I'm That's literally quoting the, quoting the verse. You're, you're the one just saying, misinterpreting oh, what, it when you read it. What he really it means is fight people who are attacking passage. you. He's putting some you're spin. You're quoting, early. you're this quoting, you're quoting. Early, later, early, later. Who's doing quote. the interpretation spin? You are. David, in you can't, book, you can't, in a, in a you can't understand declares, it exactly yeah, as it says. In a book that says. declares abrogation as the, fu- as the okay, fundamental teaching. Talk if, talk Allah, if, if Allah says then. this, Allah says, yeah. hey, uh, fight people who are attacking you. Later, he says, um, fight those who do not believe. How do you how do you reconcile this? He gives you the method. He says abrogation later versus abrogate or cancel earlier revelations. We You're can address that. We've from already my addressed it. Oh, you mean the hadith? You mean the hadith? Uh, I've been right. commanded to fight people You're until they say there's David. no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, or the one about killing the Jews even if they're hiding behind uh, trees. The which one? one? I which one? Do we? David. It we, said there's two kinds. That's of from the defensive stage. It's it's read read the title. Read the title of that hadith. 
Terus okay, kami yang... chapter marrying al mushrikat who had embraced Islam, then their idda. That what, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> give, 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 the, give the historical reference. Okay, David. Him. Okay, Zagros Ozkan says, Muji and Nadir, you approve Hamas bombing in Israel? Yes or no? No, but absolutely not. This is uh, you know terrorism and killing of innocent civilians. This is an imitation of the people of the book. As we have seen, I mean, we haven't really talked about it, but the killing of innocent women and children, this is something which the Christians have practiced all throughout the ages. It is something which is actually taught inside the Bible. And and and, and that was what was, was hilarious. You have a is is that really your response okay. every single time so when, Islam is, when Islam is questioned? What about the Bible? What about it's not communists? Islam, Hamas. No, no. Hamas was questioned. They're imitators of the people of the book. There's the answer. Okay. Okay. No, they, it, is, it is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Quran is clear that uh, we have no right to kill innocent people. Right. right? This one from Jewish Jewish Muslims. Muslims. Whoa, 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 whoa! I, I, I did want to point out that that's that's incorrect because Muslims would want would launch night raids during the time of Muhammad, and then <laughs> yes. it came to them. Yeah, yeah, and then they came to him and they said, "Hey, we, we kids are getting killed during the night raids because we can't see who we're hacking up." And he said, "Hey, they're from them, meaning they're from the unbelievers, meaning meaning Allah, meaning Allah doesn't, meaning Allah doesn't, meaning Allah doesn't care." Yeah. And just, Muhammad uh, himself said, "They yeah, are from just, them." Who's yeah. Yeah. that's Muhammad. Right, right. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally quoting quoting your prophet, and you okay, mock, David? you mock your. Well, That's word for word, Muhammad. That answer. is exactly okay, what he said. No, I, no, I just wanted to point out. So May when I it comes to, by you. the, I, I'm, no, I'm breaking it down. Quran. That's wow. not Quran. That, that's true. That's true. That that is that's that is Hadith. Quran. But the same okay. reasoning, the same reasoning was applied later when they're talking. You know, they have to figure out, hey, if we're using catapults against cities and so on, we're going to hit all kinds of people and so on. And it's hey, that's that's fine. Um, that's but true. so if if you're if you're bombing someone and kids end up getting killed, then I mean, you can't say that's you, you can't say you got to rule it out for a different may reason I, may other I than answer. that. May I answer? Okay, it's a very simple answer. So now we see who's playing the silly interpretation game. The text, what Muhammad said when they say, "Hey, listen," they, they ask him that there's some possibility that there's some uh, there might be some women and children over there. So he said, "Whom min whom?" Now that has many different interpretations. Notice it does not explicitly say to kill innocent women, children, <laughs> like the Bible does. <laughs> Many people will say, look, that's because there are many people who are who, who are among the women and children who are fighting alongside with the pagans. Like, and that was in the happened in the Battle of Hunain. There's many people because a child with a poison dart or, or a sword can be just as dangerous. There's many people, another scholars have also pointed out, well, this could be that because it was so long it was not your intention that these people, so there are these dead bodies there, that was not your intention. Okay, that's fine. So the point here is, look how he took this one statement, which is vastly open for interpretation, and David Wood put his own nasty spin on it. But did you know in that same book, right, just a couple of hadith above it, Muhammad explicitly stated, do not kill women and children. So now use this as your guide to interpret this hadith. But like I said, the 491 spot check makes it very clear from the Quran that you are supposed to do the spot check if their hands are withdrawn from you, if they're not offering you peace, and uh, and they're restrained from fighting you, you do not kill them. So the Quran um, and hadith are inconsistent. You do not kill innocent people. This one coming in from Dushanu says, question for the Muslims. If Islam is the religion of peace, please explain why the second fitna happened. I don't know which one is that. Second fitna. Gotcha. You're talking about Nadir. you're talking about the uh, uh, the Ridda wars, is what I'm guessing. That's all they put is second. Yeah, fitna. I think they're talking about the apostasy wars. So, so this is my point. Look, I, I think the audience is convinced, and I love it. They're not able to make the case from the Quran, the Hadith. And the Sira, because it all talks about not fighting peaceful people. So that's great, wonderful, Allah Akbar. They're going now into the history, into the uh, the actions of the caliphs. And I love it because now they get the picture. So, yeah, there were wars which took place. Again, they made political decisions. And I, one of the reasons why was to keep this unity in, in the Islamic empire. These were their political decisions, and we'll just leave it at that. But I'm very happy to see that you're not really bought, buying into David Woods and Apostle Prophet's arguments. The yes, second, yes, the yes. second fitna is the second fitna is a conflict between the uh, the, the Islamic uh, Caliphate, between the Umayyad Caliphate and the oh. and, and those who yeah. contest uh, their 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 rule, which is uh, more than just politics. It is actually who is in charge of the Islamic Ummah, as the Quran and, and the Prophet uh, uh, you know left it to us. And they disagree with each other and they kill 
each other brutally, just as they did from the very first day, as David quoted, and I also mentioned in my opening speech, Abu Bakr, the first caliph after Muhammad, whom Muhammad praised to no end, he himself began with that and declared war upon all those who were not good enough uh, Muslims and slaughtered them, citing Muhammad as his uh, authority there. This is what Muslims themselves did. So, and, and you are contradicting the primary authorities, the Quran, Muhammad, Abu Bakr, and everybody. Oh. Because and, and, uh, and, 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 by, and by, by, by the way, AP, um, you know, you, so you pointed out Abu Bakr um, uh, fighting the, the apostate wars, and then Aisha marches an army against Ali, thousands of Muslims dying yeah. on, on both sides. And then you have you have the, the, the second fitna, they're killing each other again, when Muhammad is the one who said the first generation of the Muslims is the best, and the next yeah. generation is the best after yeah. that. So the two okay. generations that, according to Muhammad, <laughs> are the best generation are the ones who almost annihilated themselves okay, okay. Yes. with exactly. violence. Seconds, but according to I, I but according to ten, according okay, to Muji, according to Muji and Nadir, these guys weren't even Muslims. Yeah, I will take no, ten no, seconds no, to I answer you. No, no, it's very no, easy. Let me let me just answer really quickly. They're the best generation, but not perfect. It's clear they did make mistakes, and so there's something we just can't defend about what happened after the Islamic uh, Muhammad died and their conflicts, which did come out. That's indefensible. They made mistakes. No, no, I, have, I, have very oh. I have a very simple Whoa. question. The, who the are right, well, well, the rightly guided caliphs were the ones who messed up. My, okay, that's great. I, that's good. I, have, that's good. I have a very simple question. Who do you think represented Islam more accurately? The first and second generation of Muslims or you? Oh, well, they, of course, the first and second generation. Thank you. Yeah. There we have it. Yeah, but I do I've love this go argument. <laughs> I'll okay. tell you why. I, I, hate I to love the argument just, because they're questions. not, they're, everybody, the audience is not making their case from the Islamic scriptures because you can't. But they're going to, after what the, the conflicts which took place after Muhammad died, I love go. where the discussion is going. That shows they're not buying into the baloney of Apostate Prophet and David Wood. Why don't this you borrow some Nadir of their baloney arguments you heard tonight? Masuguam <laughs> says, Nadir and Perfect Dawah, why are you in, uninterested in discussing the Hadiths? It is considered a core part of theology to the vast majority of Muslims mm -hmm. in the world. The topic is about Islam, not only about the Quran. Yeah, we, we quoted the Hadith, and the Hadith which destroyed these guys was that there's two types of disbelievers. They're the ones who fought against Muhammad, and Muhammad fought against them. And they're the ones who were at peace with them, and neither did Muhammad fight against them, and he lived in peace with them. So we right. quoted many Hadith on that, and then David Woods put Perfect some spin Dawa. on all this. <laughs> all right, okay, yeah, let me let me also say that according to um, many um, Muslims, okay, and I am one of them, any hadith goes against Quran is fabricated, okay? And there are millions of fabricated hadiths out there. Even Bukhari himself, he threw out 600,000 fabricated hadiths and he uh, chose 7,000. I'm one of them who do not agree that even his book all are authentic, okay? So maybe, of course, there are Muslims who disagree with me and um, there are many Muslims who agree with me that all his hadiths are not authentic, okay? So any hadith that, that goes against Quran is fabricated. So if you want to approve anything, first prove from Quran, okay? And then you can bring hadiths that is uh, matching with those verses of Quran, okay? Then, yes, we can agree with you. Do you think Bukhari was a charlatan? Yeah, uh, according to me, he was, uh, you know, he was a charlatan. Okay, yes, good. according to you. I, don't I, I, I agree. I agree. Respect, yes. respect, respect. Yes. <laughs> I agree. This one from Sugar Goat says, David, why don't you talk about the violence of Christianity, which says stone apostates? Why do you associate with apostate prophet who denies God? He runs away from that debate. Um, you know, the Bible can't be defended. I, I debated that topic with Shabir Ali. We had a public debate. Well, Shabir oh, Ali will yeah. actually stick to the topic. Um, so the so anyway, the Bible? can I answer the question that was directed oh, okay. towards me? Yeah, uh, answer my All right, challenge. let's hear from David Wood. All right, so um, there's no command to Christians to kill anyone, uh, including apostates. You can find uh, in the Jewish uh, in the Mosaic, under the Mosaic Covenant, where people entered into it, it was verified with miracles, and there were harsh penalties for violating the covenant. That was the covenant that they had agreed to, um, but it, that's got nothing to do with AP, right? So it, j just to, just to uh, because I find a lot of Muslims and a lot of atheists don't understand this, 
I'm apply I apply the same methodology to the Bible that I apply to the Quran, right? Um, the Quran is a series of revelations, and according to the Quran itself, the, the final revelations, they can trump earlier revelations, and you have the final marching orders. Nadir laughs at this stuff. That's what his God says. He once again laughs at his, his God and his prophet. Um, but the Bible, you have a series of covenants. There, there's a covenant with Adam. Uh, there's a covenant with Noah. There's a covenant with the children of Israel. I'm not under that covenant. Never have been, never will be. Yeah. Then there is a covenant. There is a covenant through Jesus Christ. That's the covenant I'm under. What commands do I obey? The commands of the covenant that I'm part of. I'm commanded, love your neighbor as yourself, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And so far as it depends on you, live in peace with all people and honor all people. These are commands directed towards me. There is nothing okay. anywhere well, me okay, towards me okay, to, go kill, someone, to go kill someone else. Well, David, uh, I not, didn't not, hear not you not answer not my challenge. Who is this directed towards? 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 You guys are. We've got it. Let's move to the next one. And 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 James, James, I just I just wanted to point out. Uh, mm -hmm. If the question is, David, why don't you talk about this? Again, I've debated this before because that was the question. David, why aren't you talking about this? If I were, if you're saying, well, why have I never talked? Whoa, if you're saying, why have I never okay. talked about this? I've debated this before. If you're, matter of fact, I've done uh, peace and violence in Christianity and Islam a bunch of times and specifically debated oh. Shabir Ali on whether the Bible, on whether the Bible one. is a book hey, of peace. Give me 10 seconds. On, one, 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 one second, one second, dear. One second, one second, dear. Let me just finish my response. Okay, then give me 10 seconds. If you're asking why I'm not talking about it now, <laughs> because it's not the topic of the debate, the topic is, is give Islam violent? You could say, you could say, I mean, suppose, imagine we opened up the Bible and we found Jesus saying, kill everyone in the entire world over and over again. Then what would that have to do with whether Islam is violence? I'm not sure. So, so, so basically, Dave, I just need 10 seconds. debates, I, it's, debates it's have topics. Yeah. It's a, question, it's a question Shea that, frankly, Islam. wasn't even on topic. So Here's I do have to move to the next one. This one is yeah. Ask Truth Apologetics. They say this debate is not about if people do evil things. It's about the evils done by those people are supported by or condemned by their scriptures. I'm not sure whose side that's on. This one from Kurt Hanneman says, Is the Quran perfect and easy to understand? I think we uh, kind of covered that. Uh, yeah, Asad, 491 was, was easy to understand and I thought I thought where it said, hey, if they're peaceful, your commentators, your commentators, your commentators, your commentators don't hold agree on, with you on, on that one, on. Dear. Please uh, let me talk. Don't interrupt me. Uh, you interrupted me like you just interrupted okay. me like fifty times. Hold on, so I was trying to... true, yeah. Let me let me <laughs> keep saying. But don't interrupt me. This is a oh, okay. Maybe I, okay. I, I, okay. Let me let me talk. About that. We're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Then, <laughs> so see, the thing is, the what I thought was really funny here is you really can't argue your case from the Quran. That's why they ran to commentators, okay? But the 490, the commentary on 491, nobody disagrees with with the way how I explicitly read it out, you know. But the thing is this, you know, I just want to take 10 seconds to say this, you know, Sheikh Uthman lit David Wood up on showing in the Bible that it teaches to beat a slave to death, and that's why he's running away, because you know I'm going to come after you with that verse. So he will never debate the Bible with me on that because of the terrible loss he suffered at Shape Not what it says. There's a challenge. Not what it says. Okay, do you want to debate this, David? Huh? No, with you, no. Oh. There, there, there's you have never once in your entire life stuck oh, to any run. debate topic you've agreed to, Nadir. We're going to talk and, about and being all you, a slave to death. And David. all you do anytime we debate, you say, "Ah, but let's debate this other topic." <laughs> and then, yeah, like, look at him run away from the violence of the this Bible. Yep. Running away. Yeah. Everyone's oh. running from Nadir. The great David is so scared. Of, so scared of Nadir. That's why I'm here right now. Christ is King says, question for both parties. Do you think Islam was primarily spread either through conquest or dawah? Primarily war, uh, partially through uh, uh, cultural exchanges and trading and birth rates. Yeah, yeah. but mostly war and, birth, war, and, war and birth rates. Well, so basically look at the country of Indonesia. Indonesia was, a, was, a, uh, was, was the largest Muslim population in the world today, and no Muslim army went there, and yet they were converted peacefully. But you got to understand, democracy was also spread through war. Democracy was spread to Korea, to, to Vietnam, unsuccessfully, but that was spread through war. So to spread an ideology by war so long as it's good, you know, it, it doesn't it does not mean that that country or those, that war, that book is not peaceful. Everybody spread their ideology through war, you know, so I think uh, uh, and Islam is no different from that. 
This one coming in from do appreciate your question. Danny T says peaceful Muslims should be applauded for their reformed Islam. However, some are inspired by Islam to do violence. Why ignore this fact? Help reform. They also well, said. The, yeah, I mean, they're, I, right I, now, I don't we're, we're fighting Christian terrorism. You know, even Christians are, are using the Bible to wage war in Ukraine, as I showed you from the Russian Orthodox Church. And, and, and there's many examples, actually, of where Christians as well are using the Bible to, to attack uh, uh, peaceful people. But the, the issue here, you know, when it comes to the Muslims who basically doing this terrorism, what started this, as we, we go back to people who are experts on the topic, like General Petraeus and other than the military, there's the political instability of the Middle East. The Middle East was attacked. Israel took the, the Golan High, the Gaza Strip, and other lands, and you had Russia invade Afghanistan. You had the horrible massacres take place in Bosnia and Herzegovina. These were the catalysts which caused this ter terrible terrorism uh, which we which we see today. Can well, I say something? Can I say we'll, uh, we'll agree. It's not the Hadith and the Quran. Yeah. Can I say something? Yep. Uh, the most most of this violence and ex uh, terrorism came after 1979 Iranian right. revolution. Iranian revolution and who brought this Ayatollah fascist uh, Khomeini to power was the West, USA and UK. Ayatollah, we call it Iranian, call it Ayatollah BBC. Mm -hmm. Ayatollah BBC was, uh, you know, propaganda machine for Ayatollah Khomeini because they were afraid of Soviet Union that the, the leftists take the power in Iran. So they helped Ayatollah Khomeini to take the power and they have been supporting them until today, 20, uh, 43 years. Just a few days ago, Biden released billions of dollars to this fascist regime because they released two uh, American hostages. The time that we want sanction on these mass murderers. So don't please blame Islam on right. what you do in the Middle East. Yes. Where was the terrorism in the year 1940? It didn't exist. This is all a modern day phenomenon. There is no terrorist. Islamic is, is, Islam, terrorism. Islam was at war with the entire world for 1,400 years, and uh, we were talking okay, about okay. about 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 terrorism. Islam, this is, Islam conquered. And Islam conquered. I, well, while we were talking that's not about terrorism. We're ta <laughs> we, well, we are not exclusively talking about terrorism. We are well, talking about violence. violence in Islam. That's what yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Islam. Islam yeah. spread mostly through conquest. <laughs> you bring up Everybody Indonesia, which people and oh my God, will, will, will you please let me talk? Okay. Will you please let me talk? Islam spread mostly, vastly by conquest. I am not saying uh, everything that spreads by conquest or by war is bad. I'm saying it is a fact that Islam spread by conquest and that Islam is by definition in nature violent. This is an established fact. This has nothing to do with terrorism. It has nothing to do with the methods of violence. Islam is violent. If you are today here trying to portray Islam as a peaceful thing, uh, because other things are also violent, that is that is simply absurd and fallacious. If you are here saying uh, all the violence in the past was false, Islam is actually all about you know roses and hearts and and and, and all of that, then I would say you don't really understand what Islam is. No, that's well, uh, I was talking about terrorism response, in particular. Uh, okay, let me. You're talking about terrorism. Yes, you're perfect talking about Let's hear from Perfect uh, yeah, Dawa. Okay. Yes, uh, really I pity. said, yes, yes, I said, and uh, whatever happened after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, is not 100% uh, that it was Islamic, they were different fractions, so that's, uh, we put that beside, but uh, if it's the current situation, especially in the Middle East, if 1979, the West didn't help this, uh, you know, extremist uh, Khomeini to take the power in Iran, and they didn't help it in 20, uh, 43 years, even until today, they, we wouldn't have all these uh, troubles, all these wars in the Middle East, okay? We would have peace and stability in the Middle East, so don't blame it on Islam, please. This one coming in from Asad Kamal and Deej asked the same question. Is there a religion that is more peaceful than Islam? Azhad Kamal says such as Jainism. I don't know what is well, Jainism. <clears throat> you know, the problem, you know, one of the problems as chapter 4, verse 75, I think refutes this idea that you have to be in a complete uh, passive, pacifist state. No, that doesn't work. Sivis pacum parabellum. Can, can, you answer, can you answer the question? Yeah. Okay, so the, well, how do we define peaceful? I mean, this is where I think the problem is. If you are sitting at complete, total pacifist, 
is this really the right definition of peacefulness? No, because as we saw from the Roman writer, hey, listen, you sit in that type of position, you will be conquered. That is, that is a fact of nature. So when we talk about peaceful, it's about a proper mix of war and peace. That mix, uh, that the perfect balance is what we find in the Quran. And, and so I think the type of religion of Jainism, that if, if, the, if societies followed that, they would be conquered by people like Vladimir Putin. In fact, one of the Ukrainians, <laughs> one of the Ukrainians actually quoted that Sivas Pakam Parabellum. You see, the reason why you got attacked was because you stayed in a complete defensive state. I, I don't think you are uh, sure of the political of, of the religious demographics in the in the world that we are living today and over the last uh, millennia or centuries because uh, many of these societies existed for thousands of years and still do exist and okay can I, uh, and, and you still didn't answer the question the can I question. can I Perfect can I answer give a chance that we got to yes, that yes. I said in my opening uh, opening that Islam is not a passive religion. Islam has a solution to every situation. And when you are attacked, Islam gives you the right to defend yourself, but as last the op as the last option, not the first option. Okay, so you have the right to defend yourself, but as long as you can be peaceful, yes, you have to be peaceful. And we see in the ten year ceasefire that Prophet Muhammad signed with the pagans at that time he said that do not fight them even if they provoke you so he didn't want to fight against the the kuffar okay yes you, you also didn't answer the question i mean the question was very simple why is nobody answering the question because it's a wrong yeah, definition said, of peace <laughs> yes, I, I, that I am definition that. of peace doesn't work the definition yeah, that's, of that's, peace in islam is the right definition and it has brought so much good to the world so okay, no answering the question. Well, thank you. Yeah, but to be answered, you don't understand. The no, you, you, don't, you, don't you, answer, answer. you are not you answering the question. Answer no, we said that it is not a possible. Yeah, I mean that's crazy to be to uh, you know to allow people to attack you and kill you. That's that's not peace. That's and others. stupidity. That's okay, so then, so 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 you are saying there is no religion that is more peaceful than Islam then. I would and, say Islam is the most peaceful religion because well, yes. it's got the right got balance it, got of it. war yes. and peace. Got it. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. This one coming in yeah. from, do appreciate your question. Greatest ever says, what is the difference in views of all Mahdi, hidden imam, in parentheses, between the Sunni and Shiite? Sorry, once again, I didn't understand the question. He said, what's the difference in views of all Mahdi, in parentheses, yeah. hidden imam, between the Sunni and Shiite? All right, I don't know much, but um, I think it's almost the same that they be, uh, all both Shia Sunni believe that they, uh, one day uh, the Mahdi will come and save the humanity. All believe, uh, I think, the same. Am I right, uh, brother? Uh, I think, Mahdi? yeah, there are some differences, but I think uh, that's kind of often not, off not major. Let, not we'll major. talk about that another time. Yeah, not major. You got it. Yes. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question. Masa Guam says. Surah 282, uh, two, verse 282, says that two women are needed to replace one man in a, an attestation. Then 2, 228, says that men are in a higher degree than women. Does the Quran promote gender inequality? Isn't this a cause for emotional violence? No, I just uh, would like to answer this, that... Uh... Quran doesn't uh, say in that verse uh, that um, two women should, uh, you know, uh, give the testimony. Quran says that in uh, that's only in the, uh, uh, you know, case of business is uh, just uh, the second woman is going to support the first woman. Okay, it's not going to give the testify. All right, and then uh, in Quran is clear that um, even a woman that is accused of, uh, uh, you know. Uh, what is it, um, accused of uh, uh, adultery, okay? Her husband has the right to, when he doesn't have the, the witnesses, he has the right to swear five times, okay? Uh, uh, and then the woman also has the right to uh, swear five times to, uh, you know, to um, prove herself uh, innocent. If it was half, then she should ha uh, swear 10 times. But we see that they have equal, you know, time of swearing 
exactly equal so that she is, uh, you know, released from her uh, the accusation. All right. Well, if I, if I can just say one thing real David, quick. David, so what they, do you think? About yeah, well, well, let me let me just make one quick about the about the testimonies. You know, well, let's yes. see what science says about a woman's testimony. It says over here in the article. I'm sharing He's going to defend it. He's going to defend under it. pressure. <laughs> women plead guilty to crimes they have not committed. Oh, so this, so you can go ahead and mock what the Department of Justice and other people say about a woman's testimony. So the question I'm raising is, hey man, if this is how bad it is today, where women are being coerced by other men to give a false testimony, God, just think how bad it was, you know, just a thousand years ago. So, uh, but I think I do like the questioner where he's headed. He's going into other directions to try to find how Islam could I- invoke violence. And so so, like so you, 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 you do agree. Because they're into the David Wood and Apostate Prophet stuff they heard tonight. They're like, there's got to be some other way. And I like so that. You, so you, really do, like you do the, agree. The questions the audience are, are telling me. Well, that was actually one of the points that I brought up in my, in my opening. But uh, So you do agree that uh, Islam promotes uh, inequality between the genders, Not right? Not me. Not me. You don't, well, but neither does. I, I would say there is a problem with the testimony of a woman after what we read from well, the thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, good answer. Thank you. Yeah. I'll just let science answer that. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Ben, I think it's first time question asker, says the, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't even understand what that means. I'll come back to that one. XXWLZXX says perfect Dawa and Nadir have been featured on this channel a lot. Aren't there any other Islamic debaters out there? That's a good question. It's very practical. We are looking They're for scared. more Muslim debaters. If you email, if you're a Muslim debater and you want to reach out to us, and it's not that we don't want to have perfect Dawa and Nadir on anymore. We do. We appreciate them. But if you are a Muslim debater and you, you want to come on for the first time, email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com. Really easy to remember. And okay, can I can I can I quickly I would say um, I think in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I would say uh, Muslim debaters aren't very prone to debate Islam because uh, they're very scared of debating their own religion in public well, because many of, them have, one thing, many of them have doubts. And I, th- I think Muslim debaters are in general just scared to debate. Otherwise, please yeah. come here. Let's do it. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is the people who are scared to debate are those debaters who are afraid to debate the verse in the Bible which teaches to beat a slave to death like David Wood. He, they, uh, Sheikh Uthman on. I, I hate him to say it, but it's not him. related. This one, Texas First says, Hey, David, can you re- recommend someone I can listen to about debunking modern Judaism and the Talmud? This is surprisingly harder to find than on Islam. Uh, well, you know, you got 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, and you have, uh, you know, very public Muslims like Ali Dawah talking about enforcing Sharia and killing apostates and things like that. You have Sheikh Asim al-Hakim talking about preparing to wage jihad, telling Muslims that, you know, let's prepare for a couple of decades so we could go door to door, um, giving them the option of convert, pay jizya, or be executed. And so we look at that, and that's obviously going to, you know, get a lot of yeah. focus. As far as far as apologetics dealing with uh, Judaism, um, I'd say Michael Brown. Uh, so, and there, 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 there are ministries and so on, but it's not something I've been involved in. So I'd say start with Michael Brown. Check that out. You got it. Yeah, Thank you very much for your question. Shape, uh, Nadir, no. <laughs> Bitter Truth says, Doctor says Dr. Wood, similar problem in the Bible. Let's see. I do want to stick with questions on the topic just because, it, if it, you know, folks, if we do want to have a debate on whether or not the Bible is violent, I'm, o- I'm open to hosting that. We've done it before and we could do it again. But this one coming I, in from. I've done like six of them. <laughs> Nadir, well, when you got uh, the I, I don't know what else to do. Lit up. This one from Sunflower says, Nadir and Perfect Dawa, please keep in mind, and then we want to move through these fast. So, folks, n- for sure, no more questions. I'm going to move through these last ones fast so we can get our guys out of here. Sunflower says, Nadir and Perfect Dawa, please keep in mind, the actual question was, quote, does Islam permit protests of this nature? In Islam, are schoolgirls and women permitted to pr- protest, in particular, their government, by removing their hijab? Look, inside Islamic law, and if you look at during the life of Muhammad when he lived, there were no morality police. There were no forced people who were for- forcing them to wear hijab. This is all a later modern day invention. I support the protesters. I support because people should not be forced to wear a hijab. And just like, pe- just like the French should not force people to take off their hijab. So you have this problem on both sides. In France today, they're forcing women not to wear, Muslim women not to wear particular clothing. 
both are wrong. And I think we should also see that that problem exists in France as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would like to say, uh, uh, you know, quote something from uh, Ali Radiullah that um, I, I saw a few days ago, that um, uh, he says to his governor, um, Malik, that uh, if people want to come uh, to, you know, to protest against something, okay, release your army so that they are not afraid of talking to you and protesting you, okay? So, and then uh, Ali Radiallah says, um, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't have it right now, but that one is one of them uh, that uh, he says, release your army so that they are not afraid and uh, to, to protest, okay? And that's what is going on in Iran. I have explained for you that uh, it is uh, absolutely, the regime is oppressive. The regime is a mafia regime has, that doesn't follow Islam at all, okay? In Islam, uh, we do not, uh, you know, and the biggest enemy of uh, this uh, current regime is a great democratic, uh, you know, organization, Muslim organization that unfortunately, uh, you know, apostate prophet, uh, he, without any knowledge, uh, he uh, accused them uh, to, for uh, and me being supporting, uh, you know, a cult, terrorist cult without minimum knowledge, despite we exist. So how he judged Prophet Muhammad who existed 1400 years ago, you can imagine, yeah? But even today, and I challenge him. Nothing, here, to, do, nothing to do with uh, the topic. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's why the, you, the, can the, the yes, Quran, you can run away. Yes, yes. The Quran you can and the Hadith. Hate. You the Quran actually away. commands women to wear the hijab. Muhammad yes. also commanded it, and uh, no, thereby uh, thereby okay. forced women no, to wear the hijab. Not, and so not, did no, no, and so no, did the Muslims no, no. after them, which we will there find no in all the sources. The life of Muhammad. I, so, I, I gotta go fast. Muhammad was the morality police. Yes. Uh, bitter truth says Nadir, why there's mob lynching and why is there death sentences if someone asks a question on Muhammad and Aisha being married? Is this in Islam to kill? No, it is not. Why they do that? It's absolutely condemned by the majority of Muslims. Yeah, it's no, condemned. No, it's, by no, it's not. You are, that, is, that is a lie. Okay. Most Muslims do not yes. condemn that. That is a no, complete that, lie. Okay, back that up. I, yeah. I dare yeah. you to back that up. Yeah, they, they don't get the voice. Okay, yes, <laughs> they don't get the voice. Yes, sure. like me. This one from Maswak uh, says. Nadir, why is it, and in fact, the rest of our questions, I would say, let's see, I think these are pretty much just for Nadir and Perfect Dawah. So if, let's see, so if you guys really had to go, David and Apostate Prophet, or, or one of you had to go, like, no pressure, because uh, I, it has been three hours, so I don't blame you if you have to go because it's, it's late. Uh I, and I, I will make sure that Nadir does not tack on to every single answer to a question. You Good can't point. stop Nadir for doing that. <laughs> uh, that's true. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> no one can stop Nadir from doing that. Come I'll, on. I'll read through really fast. This one coming in from. Do appreciate it. Oh, James, uh, 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 James if, if none of these are actually for me, then I do need to. Uh, we're a little past my wife's uh, bedtime, and I'm actually at the end of <laughs> my room, so... You got it. I'll let yeah, you go, David. David has to go. He, he has to obey. He has to go. Uh, Thank you for coming, David. Yeah, imagine. I, I should just go beat her and tell her to. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, folks. <laughs> the channel is not here tomorrow. You know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, David, for being with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, will, I will see it. See you, David. I will stay here for a while. I've been I've been playing a game anyway because I'm bored. But I'll just stay here to I don't uh, to I, I know it. it's it's a lot but so yeah David thank you Oh oh one, one second uh I have to go reset up outside of here um but I'll be at a, a birthday party on Hatun's channel there's a birthday party it's Muhammad's birthday in case anyone doesn't know so we're having a crash Muhammad's uh Woo. birthday party so we celebrate we celebrate we celebrate Muhammad uh Muhammad's birthday too so anyway see everyone over there she's if she's still alive have a good one, and we'll... we'll and, wait, 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 wait. Was Muji trying to say something to me before I go? Yeah, I just would like to say I talk once to Khatun, and I regret for the rest of my life because I believe that she doesn't follow Christianity. She believes in, uh, you know, a hateful, uh, you know, religion. And uh, please teach her a little bit, you know, love one another, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You, you, okay? you, you, 
you mean yeah. you mean Hatun, who yes, I mean, Hatun, it, yes. has to has to uh, yeah. I mean is is being told by the British government about all the jihadis who are coming to kill her on a regular uh, basis. I, I yes, I was she she. I, she I, she left. Yes. She left a hateful religion. Yeah. It's, it's and, her uh, fault. She's a warrior. Yeah. She's a warrior. The death threats are all her fault. Shame on Hatun. Shame on Hatun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go, go over to Hatun's channel. Catch y'all there. Take care. David, what is it running? See. See. I'm gonna rearrange the photos in OBS. But in the meantime, let me ask another question. That way, we'll give our guests a chance to respond. Maswag says, "Dear, why is it in every debate you always try to discredit the Bible, even if it's not the topic? Do you need to discredit it in order to validate your Quran by mm -hmm. contrast?" So if you if you um, recall, I waited to make that uh, difference in the question and answer time. So in the question and answer time, I, I pointed out a point which embarrassed David Wood that the Bible Hold on, just actually to be, teaches. Just, to, just, I don't, yeah. Let's not talk okay. about people who okay, are not here to defend okay. themselves. I, I pointed out a difference between the Bible and the Quran. The inside the Bible, you will find orders from God to go out and murder women and children. You will never find that in the Quran. And so there was a pathetic attempt to try to show that with an interpretation spin uh, of the hadith, but that failed miserably. So, uh, but but the point I want to point out: look, we're ready to challenge our scriptures, but there are some people who are running away. Just just stick to the topic for once, man. <laughs> Uh, so, I didn't understand what, what uh, uh, USA pack, what, what they mean. Okay, I we have explained. Uh, I have explained at least we don't want to my side. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. But uh, there is no such a you know uh, laws in Islam that uh, for uh, according uh, my understanding, you cannot uh, you know judge people um, you know who do not attack you, who do not, um, uh, what is it, uh, you know, break the law, okay? And then apostasy and, uh, you know, homosexuality, it is uh, uh, punishment to true Quran is punishment by, by Allah and next life, not here. Mm -hmm. In this life, they have the right to repent. And I have seen homosexuals who have converted to Islam and they have changed. So you have no right to punish people and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives them the time. Uh, even uh, you know, like myself, I am a former apostate. If you call me, I'm a former apostate. So I have the right to learn and change. If I die as an apostate, then my judgment is with Allah. Whatever. Okay. So you cannot. Nobody can judge me. They are all sinners themselves. Yeah. Hey, Jada, I gotta go after this question. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Mohammed actually said that uh, homosexuals should be executed and that apostates should also be executed. So. Okay, that's uh, that's your your Muhammad, not my Muhammad. Okay, yes. Yeah, so that's a debate which um, is not happening. The, the The problem with 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 the, with the gospels is that there are verses in there which can be interpreted where Jesus gives marching orders, you know, to go out and kill people in His name. But we gotta we gotta bring the Christians willing to debate this topic. But the real problem of the Bible, as we saw in contrast with the Quran, is that there are verses in the Bible. It's in the war ethics, which teaches it's okay to go into children's bedroom and stab them to death. There were orders to do that in the Bible. You will never find that inside the Quran, where it teaches to murder and kill innocent people. And so, you know, this is a debate which Christians run away from because the Bible is God is saying, This is why this Q&A has gone for so Wait, long. I you go on, guys. Ms. Soak says, Surah 434 mentions fear of disloyalty from your wife. You can admonish her, stop sleeping with her, and striking her, even if it's just a claim. Isn't this emotional abuse considered violence as well? Yeah. Okay, did you, me, did you want to yes. answer that? I get, I get good, James. Yes. You got it. I, I Thanks for that. coming yes, by and into your sleep well. All right. Thanks, uh, let me answer that 434. Okay, in uh, absolutely, um, uh, I have to 
say that there is uh, it is not uh, disobedience is in the shoes in the shoes is uh, also mentioned about women that if they fear also in the shoes from their husband okay has given them the right to uh, also solve it so the shoes is not disobedience okay it has been misinterpreted mis uh, you know and then uh, the quran chapter 4 verse 34 it says that after these two steps if it's continue this uh, you know uh, domestic problem then leave her all right and chapter 4 verse 35 explain it uh, very well that uh, in, and in case you fear split between the two not after he bet her okay after he left her the two then sent forth a judge from his family and a judge from her family so again now here even she has the right to come back or not in case they both are willing to act righteously allah will cause them to reach an agreement between them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to make, bring them back together after they separated because of, you know, this problem. So Allah uh, and this strike has been used in Quran in many, many different, uh, you know, uh, meaning. Um, I can read for you strike in chapter four th 43, verse five no, is ignore, forward. ignore. Okay, yes. It actually says uh, those who, who disobey, uh, you can beat them, and if they not disobey. if they if they obey it once more, then you can leave them in peace. No, it's not disobey. It's nashus. Okay, nashus. Uh, I can find it for you and tell according, you according to you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Not Danny, is according to me. Okay, this. I will I will give forward. you a verse of Quran. Okay, yes. Danny T says AP is apostasy a peaceful profession? Ask Rushdi. Do you remember right? Is Rushdie the person who was recently, they were recently killed? Yes, Salman Rushdie, no, he wasn't killed. Salman Rushdie uh, is the guy who wrote who wrote uh, a book, Satanic Verses, for for which he, which Muslims around the world were outraged and the, and Iran issued a fatwa to kill him. So recently somebody tried to do that but stabbed him and he survived it. So being an apostate is... A very threatening situation but here people like muji and others try to accuse us of being the ones who spread hate while we are being targeted violently by no no yeah the parents I, of I, islam no I, I have said that you are one of them who says that this is islam okay and you first of all you categorize islam for example the case of salma rushdie was political because uh, Khomeini, this uh, fatwa came one year after, and it came exactly after he was forced to make peace with Iraq because he had a lot of problems inside the country. So he always wanted to send out the problems with creating another conflict. For example, Iran-Iraq war was a great uh, you know, opportunity for Khomeini to stay in power because he had inside domestic problems. So that fatwa wasn't because he loved Islam or anything. The, exactly it came one year after the book because he kept it for a, for a you know good time to you know, send this problem after he made peace with uh, with iraq and then about uh, that beating i give which, you which, the, uh, that's not yes, the question no 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 i i want to say uh, because i found the, the the verse chapter 4 verse 128 the same word in the shoes has been changed here okay if a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband. It is the same, it's not disobedience. Here, it has been changed to indifference and or uh, neglect from her husband. Her, here is no blame on either of them if they seek fear. You, you don't seem to understand how to read a Quran verse. At no. the end of the Quran verse, it says, then if they obey you, the word here is not that word. The word here is for obedience. If they obey you, then seek no way against them once more. So it is clearly about obedience here. No, it's it's about, uh, you know, not obedience is about indifference okay it says it says uh which is which is obedience that is what it is it is unanimously in the quran used for obedience the quran the verse clearly mentions it twice so okay this one coming in from do appreciate your question danny t says kudos to perfect dawah for condemning extremists you had a fan out there perfect dawah and yeah, this one from ofel ian says how do these let's see muslims look at abrogated or 
folks, a reminder, if you haven't seen that word in a while, uh, if I remember right, abrogated means it's kind of like done away with or considered like retired. Uh, how do these Muslims look at abrogated ayahs slash surahs in light of what they just said? Okay. Uh, you know, abrogation, um, there are, uh, of course, abrogated verses in Quran, but these abrogated verses are like, uh, for example, uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu first gave the order to Muslims to pray towards, uh, you know, uh, Jerusalem, and then He changed it to pray towards um, Mecca. All right, these type of verses are abrogator verses. That okay, now no longer you need to do that. But uh, abrogation, uh, abrogation doesn't mean that, for example, that. Uh, uh, you know, Quran comes with uh, a verse that, uh, okay, do not fight uh, those who do not fight you, and then later says that, okay, now now you can fight those who do, you know, who are peaceful uh, towards you. No, that's not any types of, uh, uh, you know, abrogation, all right? This one coming in, yes. Brahm, do appreciate your question. Matmat says the Islamic conquest of India is the bloodiest story in history. Its morals, its moral is that culture and peace can at any moment be overthrown by barbarians. Uh, James, I think I, have, I, I think I would like to end it here too. Yes, you said there is no question for me anyway. It's all for. The That's most true. Most, so yeah. All right. Uh, I just. I, I would uh, like to. I would like to thank everybody uh, for watching, for being here. Thanks, Muji, and thanks to all the others. And thank you, James. I would just like to. Thank okay. you, Pazi we'll Prophet. It's been a yeah. true pleasure. Same. Just, same. Just, so just what like and, to say. And stay away from Islam, everybody. Yes, just thank want to you. say before you go, uh, AP. Please don't spread hate against me and pe peaceful Muslim like yeah, me. Sure. Okay. Okay, so okay. don't tell, do tell you tell your fellow Muslims to stop telling uh, millions yes, of people I'm, that, I'm, yes. that we should be executed. Don't yes, argue yes. with me. Go and argue no, with them. No, Have a good day. I'm, I'm, yes. Thank you, Apostate uh, Prophet. Yes, yes. And <laughs> folks, we're so close. We're at 467, 469 likes now. We can make it to 500 likes. We've got 618 live viewers, 470 now. So do hit that like button. We've got more questions. We're going to keep going as, hey, I mean, a <laughs> Perfect Dawa, we appreciate you staying with us. A reminder, yeah, all of much. our guests, including Perfect Dawa and our guests who had to retire for the night, uh, is for some of our guys coming in from the Eastern time zone, it's 11.17, which for me, I usually go to bed by 11.17. I don't blame them. I know a lot of people go to bed by 9 or 10. So if I were them, I would have gone too. But we're thankful, uh, Perfect Dawa, to have you know, here. Do you know what time is here? 5.18 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's super early, and I owe you. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you got my email, by the way. I told yeah. you that for the next debate, I would be willing to do a day debate, even though yes, uh, I yeah. hate day debates. But because you yes, were willing to do this, I'm yes, willing to I, do that. So, I, two in the morning until now. All right. <laughs> yes. You're um, hardcore. No doubt yeah, about thank it. You. Thanks a lot. So, I just would like also to uh, leave, if it's okay, uh, James. And uh, I would like to ask uh, anybody who would like to fight uh, Islamic extremism, please support me. I need this support. Uh, go and subscribe. And I am I go live every Saturdays. Okay, you can just call in and ask me questions. Let's fight them together. All right. I want a peaceful world. All right. Thank you very much, James. Thank you. I hope you have a great rest yeah, of your night. Yeah. And Thank I'm going to read any remaining Super Chats that are not particularly for our guests. So, for example, Triedge Gaming says, please have Cliff Nettle. And, oh, yeah, you can go. Recording though. stopped. Thanks for uh, being with us. As Triedge Gaming.